College football is more than a game. It's a blend of deep-rooted history and rich tradition. In the last 40 years, we've seen teams that are nothing short of legendary. Players who've become icons of the sport, and now the game has truly become a national obsession. But imagine if we hit the rewind button back to 1980 and we were able to re-simulate history. Well, that's what I've done. I've crafted 30 of college football's finest players from 1980 and placed them back at their original schools. But the real twist comes with each offseason. I'm going to be adding the top 23 recruit from the actual recruiting class of that year. We're going to track their journey from the start of the recruitment process to national signing day. This is going to fuel the new dynasties of the sport and reshape the college football universe. Then I've also made 24 of the best coaches of all time and reset their age to 22 and restarted their coaching careers at the school where they became legends. And we're going to watch their careers unfold, tally their wins, watch them chase national titles, and we will see who will emerge as the new greatest coach of all time. We're also going to follow along with each season, dissect player stats, follow team records, catch the biggest games live, and witness the crowning of new national championships. Now, I'm also going to be keeping track of the best player, coach and team of each decade. So I'm going to need you guys to help in the comment section below telling me who should win each award. And at the end of each decade, I will be making a poll on my YouTube so you guys can vote on the winner. So if this sounds like something you would be into, make sure you sub to the channel so that you can help vote on the polls and so you don't miss any of the uploads in this series. In total, we're going to have over 920 custom made recruits, over 42 recruiting classes. This isn't just a simulation, it's the most ambitious NCAA football series ever tried on YouTube. It's going to be spanning 7 parts and 28 hours to get through all 42 seasons. And this video is going to be part 5 of this series. In parts 1 through 4, we, we broke down from the season 1980 all the way till 2005. Then in this video, we're going to be going for 6 seasons from 2006 to 2011. All right, guys, so here we are. This is going to be episode number five of this crazy series I am running. So this is going to be the start of the 2006 season. Now, we have gone for like 25 plus years so far in the sim. I truly don't think anyone has tried anything this big on YouTube for NCAA or maybe even Madden. Like we are going crazy in depth with this. And we're really going to have three different elements for each video. We are going to be following along as the season and progresses we're going to follow along with the team see which teams were performing best we watch two games a year so it'll be a big regular season game or a conference championship game and then we always watch the natty as well we'll track each of these players careers and just follow along and one thing with the teams that we track through the seasons guys to keep in mind is there's over 120 teams in nc in the ncaa game and we're trying to you know make each one of these episodes four hours with six or seven seasons so i can only really focus focus on the big teams each year. So I'm really going to focus on the top, you know, 15 to 20 teams each year and you know, I treat it like any college football show that you watch. You know, they are really going to focus on those big teams each season because that is, you know, we're, when we're doing this, that's where going to be the most of our really interesting players are. Now, the second element that we will have is real life recruiting classes. So in this class, we have the 2006 recruiting class. We are going to follow where each of these guys gets recruited. Then they are going to what feed the programs for the rest of the, you know, rest of the video until they leave and we'll get new players as we go. Now, like like in this class, we have Matt Stafford, Tim Tebow, Percy Harvin. This is a really cool class that we are about to do right here. And we're going to look at that in a second. Then the last element is going to be our coaches. So I made 25 of the best coaches of all time and put them at their school that kind of they were the most famous for. Now, it's been 25 seasons. I think about a 10 of them have retired maybe there's only like four or five still left at their original school some of them have been left fired from different jobs new jobs so like right now we have barry alvarez he's now the dc at 
USC. We have Bobby Bowden, who's the head coach at Central Michigan. Now, if you look above two, you'll see their career record, um, so you can kind of get a gauge where they're at. Mac Brown, now at the Raging Cajuns. Pete Carroll's been the head coach. At, so he got fired at USC, got hired at Colorado. He's been there 11 years. Jim Harbaugh, now the head coach at uh, Mississippi State. He's been there. He's been at Stanford. He's been at a few schools, Oregon State. We have Woody Hayes, who's actually been at Ohio State the whole time. And what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to track these coaches and we're going to see who actually goes down as the greatest coach of all time. So right now, Woody Hayes has the most out of any of our coaches with four national championships. He has a career record of 287-67. We have Lou Holtz, who was at Notre Dame, won two national championships there, but actually got fired. We have Don James, OC at Tulane. We have Jimmy Johnson, who just Two years ago, got fired at Miami. He was at the U. He was 200. He had like 250 wins there. Got fired. He won a national championship as well. We have Chip Kelly, who's actually at his second go around, or yeah, with Oregon. So he's gonna try to see if he can get get it turned around there. We have Urban Meyer, who's never been fired at Florida. Been there the whole time. He's 293 and 62. He has three national championships. We have Robert Nealand, who got fired from Tennessee, then got rehired, and he's been there for 10 years now. We have Ed Orgeron. It's really weird. A lot of these guys are getting re rehired at the school they started at. Ed Orgeron hired at LSU, got fired. Now he's back, but he's got low job security. We have Tom Osborne, who's been at Nebraska the whole time. Actually hasn't won a natty. Won seven conference championships. Has a really good record, but hasn't been able to take home, you know, the the, the total prize. We have Joe Pa. Um, he's at San Jose State now. Obviously got fired from Penn State. We have Gary Patterson, who's now the head coach at um, Oregon State. We have Nick Saban, who's on the hot seat at Wisconsin. He has not really been able to get it going through the whole sim. We have Bo Schembechler, who left Michigan and now is at Penn State. We have Howard Schnellenberger, who's at Louisville forever, and now he's been at Georgia Tech for eight seasons. We have Kirby Smart, who's been at Georgia the whole time. He has won a national championship. We have Steve Spurrier as an OC. We have Davo Sweeney, who's now been at Bama for six years. We have Barry Switzer, who's been at Oklahoma the whole time and has won three national championships. We have Kyle Whittingham, who got fired at Utah, went bounced around, and now he's back at Utah, and that is it. So like I said, another, I think, nine, ten coaches uh, did retire. Woody Hayes has won three or four. Urban's won three. Barry Switzer's won two or three. Lou Holtz has won two. This Drew Thatcher's the not one of our guys, but he's at UCLA. But really, these four head coaches have been the best throughout. You throw Jimmy Johnson in there as well. But uh, yeah, so we're basically going to fall at the end of each season. Look at all the coaches again. See who gets fired, who gets hired. And we're going to go through it like that. Now, we are going to take a look at our recruiting class. So like I said, we have a brand. I make a brand new real life recruiting class for each season that we go through. Now, the recruiting classes in this NCAA 14 game max at it, out at like 23, 24 recruits. So I make 23 recruits for each class. Now we are going to, the rest of the class is auto generated. So it'll be fake players, but 23 real life of the best players from that re recruiting class. And we get to follow along and see how they perform. So we have, I try to like get a good mix of position groups and everything, but certain classes will be heavy at one position, kind of weak at another or whatever. Now, first looking at QBs, this is actually a really good QB class. We have four of them. We have Sam Bradford, who's looking at Oak. Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma State. He obviously played at Oklahoma in real life. We have Matt Stafford, who's looking at Nebraska, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan. Now, one thing to keep in mind as well, guys, I for those created coaches I made, I tried to make them play in a similar system to how they actually coach. So at Nebraska and Oklahoma are very run heavy schemes and Nebraska runs like a triple option offense, you know, wishbone offense like they ran under Tom Osborne. So that's always something to keep in mind with these programs. So like if Stafford goes there, they get a really good QB, but he doesn't really throw the ball a ton. We have Jake Locker, who's looking at Ohio State, Minnesota, Michigan, Penn State, Nebraska, and he obviously went to University of Washington. Then last but not least, we have Tim Tebow from Jacksonville, Florida obviously played for the Gators. Florida has been one of our the best teams through the entire sim. They have a good QB this year, but he's gone. So it would be kind of cool to see Tebow go back to Florida. Uh, I would be into that. They've had a crazy run, Florida. They've been so good recruiting. If you if this is your first episode you're watching, you didn't watch any of the previous ones, like they have been incredible. Okay, moving on to running backs. We got four again. First, CJ Spiller. He is from Florida, but he played at Clemson. He's looking at Georgia, Oklahoma, Florida, Penn State. We 
We got Beanie Wells, big 6'1", 235 pound running back. He played at the Ohio State. He's looking at Nebraska, UCLA, Army, Oklahoma, Alabama. We got LaShawn Shady McCoy from Pennsylvania. He played at Pitt. He's looking at Ohio State, Nebraska, Penn State, UCLA. And then last but not least, we got DeMarco Murray. He's looking at USC, Nebraska, Michigan, Ohio State, Oklahoma. Okay, moving on to wide receivers. This is a pretty good class. We only have three. First is Kenny Britt. He played at Rutgers, was a big time uh, pick by the Tennessee Titans. He's looking at Michigan, Nebraska, Ohio State, Penn State. We have Percy Harvin, who obviously played at Florida. He's looking at Florida, Minnesota, Ohio State, Alabama. Now, obviously, you know, it'd be kind of cool to see him and um, Tebow back at Florida, but we'll see. And one thing to keep in mind, guys, I have nothing to do with the recruiting. We, I don't play any games. I don't recruit anybody. All these players are free to sign wherever they want. I do not. I, I can't literally impact it at all. Uh, the last guy is going to be Michael Crabtree, who we remember at Texas Tech was like unbelievable one I think the Blitnikoff as a sophomore top 10 pick by the Niners um he's from Texas but he's looking in Nebraska Florida Georgia UCLA Oklahoma we have no tight ends but if we go offensive tackles we got two we got Trent Williams still dominating the NFL you know with the Niners with the skins um and was a top five pick he's looking at Nebraska Michigan UCLA Oklahoma Ohio State then we got Andre Smith is our other one he played at Alabama um big time recruit big time pick uh in the NFL as well he's looking at Michigan Nebraska Penn State Minnesota we have no interior offensive linemen in this class but we and we only have one oh we have two defense events it's Brandon Graham who played at Michigan still plays with the Eagles in the NFL he's looking at Nebraska Penn State Minnesota Oklahoma UCLA we have Sergio Kindle from Texas played for the Longhorns like physical freak off the edge he's looking at Texas A&M Oklahoma LSU we go inside to our D tackles we got a pair we got Gerald McCoy from Oklahoma played for Oklahoma third overall pick i believe by the tampa bay buccaneers uh looking at oklahoma nebraska michigan ohio state texas uh then we have gino atkins he played at georgia cincinnati Bengals. really good interior pass rusher he's looking at arizona arizona state northwestern wake forest kind of a weird group of schools now we only have one linebacker it's middle linebacker brandon spikes who played at florida another guy who played at florida might go there he's looking at florida nebraska oklahoma georgia ucla uh cornerbacks we got two. We got Vontae Davis from Washington, D.C. He played at Illinois. He's looking at Minnesota Army, uh, Penn State, Florida, Oklahoma. Then we got Richard Sherman from Cali. Played at Stanford, you know, Hall of Fame level corner uh, for the Seahawks. He's looking at UCLA, USC, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Michigan. We have no free safeties, but we have three strong safeties. We have Taylor Mays, one of the freakiest safeties in college football history. 6'3", 230, ran like a 4'3", blew people's heads off, but he was like very low, you know, you didn't really, you didn't have the best feel for the game, but crazy athlete. He's from Seattle, Washington. He's looking at Penn State, UCLA, Ohio State, Nebraska, Michigan. We got Cam Bam Bam Chancellor, part of the LOB with Sherman uh, from Virginia, played at Tech. He's looking at West Virginia, Virginia Tech, Georgia, Tennessee, Western Kentucky. And then we got Myron Roll. He played at Florida State. It was like a second round pick in the NFL draft. He's looking at Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, Nebraska. So that is our recruiting class, guys. And we're going to basically follow this recruit, these recruits, and these are what are going to feed the rest of the teams, you know, as we go through each season. So now we are going to sim to the start of the 06 season. Now at the start of each season, I go through kind of, we always kind of look at the same stuff. So at first I like to look at the top 25 and we just like to get a gauge on who the best teams of the season are going to be. So for example, Florida, they're A plus, you know, number one team preseason in the country. We have UCLA. Actually, one thing right now, guys, I'm going to throw up on the screen right now. This is the results of the sim so far. So you can see every national championship winner. Um, last year, it was Florida, Baylor, Ohio State, one back to back. And you can see all the way back to 1980. Now, one thing this doesn't really show you is how many natties UCLA has been to. They 
they've been to something like they went to like eight in like 11 years i think they only won two of them but they have just been one of the best teams through the sims since about the mid 90s early 90s so that is really you know keep in mind ucla they have aaron Rodgers right now we're gonna go and look at all the rosters but they are absolutely loaded they've been really good we have nebraska who's been really good we have minnesota right now you'll see we'll look at their roster they have some really good players oklahoma now this roster is incredible they they're one of the best teams in the country georgia same thing baylor's pretty good and they've actually made the national championship they won it two years ago and made it last year so they're you know a tough squad we have penn state syracuse um army looks pretty good keep going down do we have any other a's we got texas and a&m both decent texas a&m was incredible in the 80s but have started to fall down a plus ohio state they had a bad year last year but they're actually freaking loaded too they're actually a top five team so we'll definitely look at their roster so we'll do that i'll go look at the heisman watch so right now it says brad coles we have aaron Rodgers at ucla his last year as a starter there you can take a look at his stats now they actually play like a triple option wishbone offense as well so Rodgers doesn't throw for a ton of yards but i mean he's really obviously good for them i always like to look at the all american teams preseason so aaron Rodgers right now we got devin hester at miami he had a crazy year last year at 1845 yards we got larry fitzgerald who's at minnesota he had 1500 yards we got joe thomas at ohio state davin joseph at nebraska nick mangold at ucla lamar woodley off the edge for ohio state kyle williams on the interior for texas uh keep going down michael griffin at at Oklahoma free safety uh if we go second team Eric Winston on the O-line just keep going down yeah so there is the second team so always like to look at that the other thing I like to look at is our championship contenders so this will basically show us what teams are supposed to be the best over the next two years so Ohio State that's just basically basing it off last year they're a top five team like you look they're a top five team for the foreseeable future Georgia next three years looks really good Nebraska top five team all the next two years uh, Nebraska has a sick roster we're going to check out Oklahoma looks like they're kind of at their peak for the next two seasons then take a bit of a dip Texas meh UCLA top five-ish team the whole time Florida they are one seven one one so yeah I mean if they get Tebow they don't have a QB that's that's like their biggest thing and we can kind of go down and just see so those are kind of the top teams in the country right now and kind of projecting forward now other thing i like to do before we actually start getting into the season is i just want to like kind of look at the rosters so i'll go through and look at some of the biggest teams so like right now calvin johnson is with alabama but you see they're just not that great like you're gonna see some of these teams are way more loaded army right now is probably better than than bama uh they have some decent players they have chad H chad henny actually a sophomore qb so a real life qb um and yeah they're just honestly pretty deep they have a really good coach right now who does a really good job with recruiting clemson has basically done nothing through this whole sim they really don't have anyone to be worried about now florida has been consistently one of the best teams through the whole sim right now they have devin hester sean merriman as kind of their two superstars but they are not as good as they've been at past years they are the number one team they do have a good 96 senior qb but you see they have a decent freshman next year but if they were able to lock down um tim tebow it would really set them up for success. If Keith Rivers and oh, they got Ndamukong Sue. They do have a lot of good players, but not like not quite to the level that they've been in past years. If we look at Georgia. They are stacked right now. They got Ahmad Brooks, Dante Whitner, Antonio Cromartie, uh, Steve Smith, the uh, wide receiver who played at USC, Robert Ayers, um, really loaded. I don't know if they have a QB though. Yeah, an 83. Like he's a sophomore, so by his senior year, he could be like a 91. Like that'll be nice. But this year not great do they have any wide receivers either oh yeah they have steve they actually have a decent group of wide receivers but it'll really be up to the qb because they have a really good defense they, they have a lot of talent going down lsu they've had some points where they've looked pretty good through the sim not right now same with miami of ohio a few years ago they were really good um and then they fired jimmy johnson they're still fine but they have not been getting the recruits like they were michigan yeah just not really haven't really done much through the whole sim at all they do have some decent guys like ray 
Rice and Derek Harvey, but nothing crazy. Now, Minnesota's really interesting. They've been killing it QB. They got Alex Smith. I put Joe Maurer in this because he's a baseball player, but he's a really high recruit. Joe Maurer started for them for like three years. Now they have Jay Cutler for the next two years. They have Larry Fitzgerald. So they're actually a really fun, interesting team. They're going to be just that. What a college combo. Jay Cutler and Larry Fitzgerald. So that will be interesting. Uh, keep going down. Nebraska. Now, this is a cool team. Look at their offense, guys. They got Marcus Vick for this year. They have a junior quarterback, a freshman coming up. So they're good at QB. But Marcus Vick, Michael Vick's little brother, 86 speed. And remember, they play a triple option run heavy offense. Look at their running backs. Reggie freaking Bush, who had as a sophomore last year, had 1,441 yards. They got Michael Bush, who's 6'4", 248. It's basically Lendale White and Reggie Bush um, together again. Look who they just got at receiver. Deshaun Jackson. Now, they have been doing crazy at recruiting receivers, but they don't throw. They had Randy Moss. They got Steve Smith, like the uh, Panthers, Steve Smith. They got Dion Branch, and now they have Deshaun Jackson, like all back to back to back. But like, I don't even think Randy ever went over like eight. 800 yards in a season just because they don't really throw the ball but this nebraska team is loaded they have good defenders too like leron landry you know they they are a good team really good team they easily have a chance to win it all this year now notre dame they're not bad but they were a team who is dominating over the first 10 to 15 years of the sim it was them and texas a&m were the two best teams they have really they're still good, but they have not really been in the national title conversation since they fired Lou Holtz. They really shouldn't have done that. Uh, they actually don't have a bad team this year, so maybe we'll see some more noise from them, but just not incredible. Okay, we go down to Ohio State. This team is loaded. So if you look, I actually made Vince Young 6'7". I, I meant to make him 6'4 when I was creating the prospects, and I can't change it now, but they lost Vince Young in game. Look at his stats from his, his freshman year. He started as a true freshman. 4,000 yards, 43 touchdowns and 797 yards rushing he got hurt in game one last week at last year he was 329 yards and four touchdowns got injured in that game so they had no qb and they did not play good but they are loaded they got vince young they got uh adrian peterson only a sophomore they have no receivers really but their tight ends are vernon davis and zach miller they have um joe thomas um at left tackle lamar woodley at pass rusher mario williams at the other pass rusher marcus spears at d tackle uh do they have all kind of just um created uh auto generated linebackers they do have young Jer james laranitis who they're bringing up corner they have a couple of decent seniors but man they really got to get some corners in for next year uh safety they're decent uh yes yeah. so their their secondary isn't great but that team is absolutely loaded oklahoma another team loaded they have a decent quarterback this year they really need a quarterback if they could get sam bradford someone like that that would be great for them but then they got frank gore d'angelo williams at running back right now they have robert meacham at wide receiver they have uh, mercedes lewis at tight end uh like just talent cameron wimberly uh cedric ellis at d tackle michael griffin uh, like these guys look at Glenn Dorsey they look at their talent all the way down the roster this Oklahoma team could easily win their fourth natty this year keep going obviously guys I'm not going to look at every roster it would just take too much time so I try to focus on some of the biggest teams and who has a chance this year Darrell Revis went to Tennessee but they really haven't been doing anything Texas just like okay not nothing like Oklahoma or Ohio State or anything same with Texas A&M Reggie Nelson they're fine early do set but nothing crazy now another team that these guys are never quite as talented as oklahoma ohio state florida but they like i made they, they've made eight national championships in the last like 10 12 years so and they've won two or three like they have been absolutely killing it they have jonathan stewart in it running back this year they have matt liner and aaron Rodgers. Rodgers is going to start but they're going to have matt liner next year they have you know decent receivers but really this team has just been so consistent lawrence jackson mac uh, max unger and they still have aaron Rodgers. there's every chance they can go on a run this year usc been very disappointing and those are kind of our big teams wisconsin's interesting just because this is where saban is it'd be kind of cool to see him kind of me, me able to create something here but he's on the hot seat right now now one other thing to keep in mind before we get going here guys is i also have moved the conferences a little bit because ucla was going on such a run I actually put Oklahoma and Texas in the Pac-12 just because the big 
10 has no conference championship game and then the ucla didn't really have any competition in the pac-12 of a really elite school so put oklahoma and texas there now those teams have to go through each other and play in a conference championship to make it and also it's in the 80s because notre dame was independent they had no conference championship game i actually put them in the acc as well so that is just kind of the two moves i made as far as that so that is it guys now we are going to sim until week nine and then i'm going to take a look at uh, we'll look at recruiting we'll look at top 25 see all how all these teams are doing all right so here it is in week nine guys now obviously i'm controlling air force in this sim but i do not recruit one player i don't play any games i don't do anything so i just let computer handle it you know that's it so we're just here watching so gonna go through recruiting right now and see where everyone's at so sam bradford looking like a whole oklahoma or baylor oklahoma desperately needs him it would be the perfect fit for them matt stafford going to nebraska it's good for nebraska like they get an elite qb i don't love it just in the fire the fact he's not gonna put up crazy numbers but great for nebraska jake locker looking like ohio state maybe I mean, that'd be the perfect fit after Vince Young. You go right to Jake Locker and it's looking like Tebow's going to go to Florida. Maybe Wake Forest. I actually like all those fits for those QBs. Okay. CJ Spiller going to UCLA. They just got Jonathan Stewart last year. So they're going to have their own like thunder and lightning combo there. That is sick. They are super run heavy offense. Beanie Wells going to Army. The coach at Army is just absolutely killing it. Shady is going to Nebraska. So he's going to take over for Reggie Bush after he leaves. Stafford, Deshaun Jackson. Jackson and LaShawn McCoy in two recruiting class for Nebraska. That is crazy. And DeMarco, okay, he's not really getting recruited right now, so we'll have to see there. Okay, wide receiver. This is going to be big. Kenny Britt. You, or Ohio State desperately needs a wide receiver. Kenny Britt would be a perfect fit for them. Percy, Lord have mercy. It's perfect. There's a lot of schools in the mix still, but looking like Florida, maybe Bama, Miami. The last one, Michael Crabtree, looking like UCLA, Georgia, Kansas State. So lots of teams in the mix there. I mean, UCLA needs receivers. Once again, it's a team that they don't really throw, but hey, that's, that'd be sick for UCLA. Trent Williams looking like Michigan, maybe Colorado, maybe Nebraska or Oklahoma. Um, Andre Smith looking like Penn State, Nebraska, Troy, Michigan. The end, Brandon Graham looking like Minnesota, Oklahoma, Penn State are his top three. Sergio Kindle looking like AM, Oklahoma, UTEP. D tackle Gerald McCoy going to Oklahoma. That's a huge pickup for them. I think they have Glenn Dorsey. So they're going to have Glenn Dorsey and Gerald McCoy. That's nasty. Geno Atkins going to Arizona State. Middle, Brandon Spikes going to Oklahoma. So Oklahoma's doing really well right now. Cornerback, Vontae going to Army or Florida. Maybe Penn State. Sherm going to Michigan, Nebraska, USC. Free safety, we got none. And strong safety. Taylor Mays looking like Ohio State, Nebraska, Penn State. Bam Bam going back to Vaughn Tech. That's his real life school. And then Myron Roll going to Penn State. So that is where we are sitting with recruiting guys. Obviously, we still have like we're gonna wait till National Signing Day. Like some not those are not locked in stone for a lot of them. So okay, gonna look at our top 25. We'll see some, where some of these teams are sitting. So Oklahoma sitting at six and zero. Nebraska sitting at six and zero. Georgia, UCF. Those are undefeateds right now. Um, everyone else has at least one loss. So who does does Oklahoma has Oklahoma played UCLA? No, they just played Cal. They beat Florida week one. They beat UCLA week three. So Oklahoma. Oklahoma has played a tough schedule and got it done. Nebraska, Nebraska hasn't played as tough of a schedule. They do have three ranked opponents coming up here. Georgia, uh, they we have Georgia, Florida coming in a few weeks. That is a huge game. UCF, uh, obviously not playing the toughest schedule, but we'll see with them. Uh, UCLA, five and one. Florida, Minnesota, Florida State, Cal, all some good teams. Texas A&M, Notre Dame, but yeah, lots of teams with one loss right now still in the mix. Uh, look at the Heisman watch. Right now, Vince Young leading the way. Marcus Vick in third. The Humphrey from Florida. So we have some big names at the top. Uh, Oh, 28 touchdowns, one pick. He's averaging 356 pass yards a game. Vince Young is, if he keeps this up, this is going to be one of the best seasons we've ever seen. That is crazy. Um, let's look at season stats. Vince Young leading the country in passing, rushing. That's where we're sitting. Receiving uh, Vernon Davis as a tight end leading the way at Ohio State. Darius Hayward Bay for Florida. Tackle leaders, uh, sack leaders, and then interception leaders. Now, let's look at some team stats here. 
So total offense, Ohio State, 3,700 yards leading the way. Points per game, Ohio State, Nebraska, Florida, all over that 40 points per game mark. Here's top defenses, Baylor, UCF, Georgia, Ohio, Florida, Wake Forest, Minnesota. Okay, so there wasn't any regular season game that totally jumped out to me as like, ah, we got to check that one out. So I'm going to sit into the conference championship weekend. We are in conference championship weekend and my Air Force team that I don't recruit, I haven't done anything with is one of the two unbeatens. We have UCLA playing Oklahoma. The winner is going to make the natty most likely. The loser will not. We have Nebraska versus Ohio State. Wow, those are two absolutely incredible games. Um, and then we have my Air Force team playing San Diego State, having to stay undefeated. Okay, interesting. Now, first to kind of get it out of the way, I want to see if my Air Force team beats San Diego State. Because if they win, they're basically guaranteed a spot in. I'm, I'm honestly hoping they lose because I think we could have an insane natty. San Diego State does beat Air Force. So that kind of saves us from having a very interesting um, national championship. Now we have Ohio State and Nebraska and UCLA and Oklahoma. I'm pretty sure it's just going to be, I guess, Georgia or a no, I, I think it's going to be just the winner of these games makes it. Okay, UCLA, Oklahoma, let's sim it. I think Oklahoma is going to take this. UCLA wins again. Guys, you do not understand if you haven't watched the other episodes how many games they've been in. Now they've been in 2006. They made it in 03 and lost. They made it in 02 and lost. They made it in 2001. They made like the year 2000 and they won that one. They made it in 1998 and won. They made it in 1995 and lost. And 1996 and lost, and 1997 and lost. That's like nine, eight. I don't know. It's crazy how many of these guys have been in this amount of time. Absolutely insane. So I think it's going to be them and UCLA. Let's actually look at the top 25 really quick because Nebraska loses. I mean, maybe they'd put Florida in Ohio State over Ohio State, but I don't think so. Oklahoma lost, they're out. Air Force lost, they're out. Nebraska lost their out. So it's either Florida or use Ohio State. Ohio State just beat Nebraska. So I think it's got to be those two. So there it is. Vince Young wins the Heisman. Now, one other thing with all this, guys, I'm going to be doing polls on YouTube where I kind of mentioned it in the intro. And if you watch other episodes, I'm going to do polls where I where we vote on the player of the decade for each decade and the coach of the decade. Um, right now, I mean, Vince Young, his freshman year was insane. He just won a Heisman. If he wins a natty that next year comes back and does similar next year, he's on the list right now for the uh, 2000s. I really have Philip Buchanan for um, Miami. He had 20 interceptions in, in his career. Nine as a senior. Won the Thorpe, which is the DB of the year, two years in a row. We have Philip Rivers, uh, who just left Florida. He won a Heisman. He was a four-year starter and won a national championship. So that's kind of who's in the running right now. Yeah. So it is Ohio State UCLA. Great matchup. UCLA trying to win their third or fourth. I think it's their fourth natty and of the sim in ohio state trying to win their fifth which is nuts we got aaron Rodgers with vince young ohio state's definitely the better team but you cannot count this ucla team out literally all this team does is freaking win that's it they don't lose they just keep making these games nine of them i i, I don't even know man it's crazy absolutely crazy now they are fourth on offense. Ohio State is first. UCLA does have the better defense on, uh, like, statistically, though. Here's their top three. Here's uh, Ohio State's. No Adrian Peterson and maybe no Jonathan Stewart. I don't know what's going on with all these running backs getting injured, but um, it's really up to, like, Vernon Davis and uh, Vince Young. That is their two playmakers without Adrian Peterson. They don't really have any big-time weapons at wide receiver. A Rod versus V Y. A Rod, if he wins this too, has to be in the running as well. He this will be his second appearance, four-year starter. If he wins one, he never put up insane stats, but he's just been very consistent at UCLA. And they actually go up seven-nothing. 
Uh, Ohio State answers. Um, now UCLA trying to answer back. Second and three, first and 10, second and seven, third and four. Let's see what UCLA has got up their sleeve right here. Third and four. They play this kind of wishbone offense like Nebraska as well. Drop back. They got pressure. A Rod throws the guy off, but then he goes down. Loss of six. This is Ohio State has a lot of talent in their front seven. Oh, and UCLA is actually out of field goal range. So they're going to go for this here. This is a huge play. Uh, Ohio State could get out of here allowing zero points. Or UCLA is going to get a massive pickup. A-Rod's going to slide in the pocket. He doesn't see anybody. He's got to get rid of it. It hit the guy in the shoulder. Look at A-Rod. That was his first incompletion. Hit the guy in the shoulder. Now VY gets the ball back. He's going to punt it though. Oh, no. It was a fumble. Ohio. Ohio State fumble. We got third and five here for UCLA. So, wow. Okay. Drops back. A rod sitting in the pocket. Slides. He's going end zone. That's a touchdown. Did he go out of bounds? I think the receiver might have went out of bounds. Illegal touching. He went out of bounds and came back in. Oh, and that's going to push them back to fourth and 10. UCLA is going to kick their three here. That is a huge four-point swing. And then UCLA misses the field goal. Oh, my. UCLA, that is tough. Now, VY's got it third and 17. Oh, man. So, Ohio State's having trouble getting going against this UCLA front. They just don't have as enough playmakers right now. Like, it's all up to Vince Young and Vernon. They're going to be short there. Um, they really desperately, like, if they could get Kenny Britt, that would be huge um they're gonna have to punt here though back to a rod who loses a bunch on him his own so he's gonna punt okay now vy is cooking a little bit second one and they score there it is all of a sudden ohio state just catches fire goes right down and scores on ucla and now ucla starting to you know fall back to earth a little bit here they're stuck inside their own 30 third and eight 150 left let's see how aggressive they get with a rod okay a rod's gonna do a straight drop slide going deep i don't want to oh my <laughs> Oh, I don't know if I've ever seen that animation in this game. That was an incredible one-handed stab out in traffic, 28 yards down the field to keep the drive going. Then to the same guy, gold for 17, then Hoffman for 27. They got it down to the one yard line. That catch and throw were insane. And that's going to allow UCLA to probably tie it up right here. They're going to throw a toss. I think that's Jay Stu. And he gets in. Jonathan Stewart, the true freshman, five-star running back, gets in. And UCLA with an incredible drive. But they actually left a lot of clock for Ohio State. Vince Young, 12 yards, second and three, third and three. Picks up 12 again, second and two, first and 12. Oh, you're not going to have time. You Use your timeout. Guys, can I call a timeout for them? That's ah, just insane. You have one... The clock management um, can be so dumb in this game. They literally have one timeout and they didn't call it there. I literally tried to call it for them because it was that dumb, but I literally can't. So there it is. Um, Should have probably been 17-14, but there we go. UCLA driving here. First and 10. First and 10. First and 10. First and 10. Second and 13. Third and 15. And this is a, a tough down right here as well because they are out of field goal range here. So, um, you know, if, if Ohio State stops them from getting any yards here, it is going to be no dice on the field goal. They're going to have a nice out route. That is going to be a first down. And that's probably going to be a makeable field goal from right there. That's Jay Stu right there as well. That is going to be a field goal attempt. And it's no good. So their kicker must be out. He's mixed, missed two borderline chip shot field goal. And Vince Young just hits two back-to-back -back explosives. Then hits another touchdown. Is 21-14 Ohio State. UCLA needs an answer. Second and eight. Third and six. Let's see what UCLA can do. Big down. You want to crawl back into this. They got their wishbone. They're going to motion the guy across. A-Rod going to do a draw. No, man. And these this NCAA game is coded just to love draws on third and long. I don't get it. Um, Vince Young, third and three, first and ten, first. And, oh, my gosh. Look at those explosives. I want to, like, watch on the money downs on third downs, but they're not even getting to third downs. They're just hitting them on big explosives on first down. 392 yards for Ohio State. VY dropping back. Five. 
fires it in for the touchdown and Ohio State takes a commanding lead. VY has almost 400 yards passing in the third quarter. A-Rod, you need an answer right here, right now. They're, they're doing well running the ball, but is this going to be explosive enough? They got it to fourth and three and they punt with the start of the fourth. Third and four, Vince Young could put them away right here. You go up 21, you know, with five, six minutes left, it is over. Vince Young, this is your go time. You're the Heisman Trophy winner. Fires a nut. This guy's got a rocket of an arm, too. He is a chance. Like, if he wins another Heisman in an Addy next year, he could be the player of the sim. He did get hurt his one year, but seven yards, throw away, third and 10. This is the play of the day if you are UCLA. You need a stop. You have to have a stop here. You get him to this third and long. Vince Young, they bring a blitz, throw it on the Oh, the receiver drops it. It hit him in the hands and UCLA is alive still. Wow. UCLA going to get the ball back. Now you need Rodgers. This is his last career college game. You need him to make a play. It is third and 10 here. Very similar area of the field where Young just was on third and 10. And now it's A-Rod's turn. He needs to make a play here. Rodgers drops back. Fires it. That's going to be a little bit short. That's Jonathan Stewart. I would go for this. I hope they do because you are, they are going to go for it. Okay. Sometimes the computer can get weird on when they go for it. Rogers, the 17 of 20. They just don't throw the ball a ton, but here it is. Play of the day. You don't make this. It's game over. A-Rod play action. Fires it over the middle. That's going to be a first down. Just about a half yard ahead of the sticks there. Rogers off play action. Fires it in. Okay, minus two, third and nine. Hits a big 34-yard gain, and they score. So it's going to be a seven-point game. Ohio State gets the ball, 343. Yes, Vince Young. Then he hits more for 14. Yeah, 14, second and 10. First and goal from the six. That is pretty much going to do it here. All they need is a point. You know, one, you know, a field goal here, and it is a two-score game with two minutes left. Fires it. He doesn't want it. Vince Young wants a score, and Vince Young is putting on a freaking show. 476 yards and his fourth touchdown pass of the day against the number one UCLA team. This is going to do it for Rodgers. We'll watch one more play for Rodgers. A four-year starter at UCLA makes two national championships, but doesn't ever close the deal. And this is actually, I didn't even realize this. Ohio State beat, oh my God, it's going to be A-Rod on a keeper. Is he going to score this? I wasn't even watching. Oh my goodness, Aaron Rodgers just scampers. I didn't even I don't even know what happened for a 67-yard run. They still have three timeouts. Okay. So Ohio State beat UCLA in the Natty in 02. Then A-Rod's freshman year, Ohio State beat UCLA in 03, and then they might do it again in 06. But all of a sudden, onside recover by Ohio State, five yards three yards okay now it's definitely over again that is going to give vince young over 500 yards uh passing today as well a rod like he did all he could but that is it woody hayes wins his fifth national championship third year and third time in a row they beat ucla in the big game a rod Four-year starter, makes two national championships, and never gets it done against the Buckeyes. What a game. A-Rod, 67-yard run at the end there. Wow, what a finish. So, VY, insane game. 75% completion percentage, 502, four touchdowns. He also had a he had six total touchdowns in the game. Like, he just doesn't even have anyone. He has this Moore, who's a freshman, 81 overall, 79. Like, these are his pass catchers. Other than Vernon Davis and Zach Miller, who Zach Miller gets one catch today. Like, this guy, I mean, this guy's going to be pretty good by next year. He's 6'4", 197. But, like, VY was not doing it with elite game breakers other than Vernon Davis. You know, he didn't even have AP. Um, you look at A-Rod, really good day, 325, a score, ran for 87 yards and touch, and Jonathan Stewart's going to be really good for these guys, but uh, wow, Vince Young and Ohio State, Woody Hayes, fifth ring in like 26, 27 seasons, won five national championships for Ohio State. It'll be very interesting to see how many he can win. He's got the best chance to get to that, you know, eight 
seven eight mark to get in that Nick Saban in like in real life territory. Okay, we're going to advance week here. Okay, we're going to look at just some of this wrap-up stuff at the end of the year here. So I don't know why they do this sometimes. Oh, UCLA somehow in the coaches and the AP is the number one team. Obviously, it's Ohio State. Then UCLA, Oklahoma, Florida, UCF, Auburn, Texas A&M, Air Force, Nebraska. Um, Heisman, we already seen. All-Americans. Vince Young for sure. Michael Bush, because Reggie got hurt. 2,000 rushing yards this year. 23 rushing touchdowns. Larry Fitz in his last year. Only had 950 receiving yards. So actually didn't have that great of a year. Vernon Davis at tight end. 1,200 yards, almost 13 touchdowns. Uh, Joe Thomas wins an Addy. Davin Joseph, Nick Mangold, Aaron Brooks, or sorry, Ahmad Brooks for Georgia at six and a half sacks this year. Marcus Spears for the Ohio State. Dante Whitner for Georgia. Jamal Charles, return man for UW. I forgot he went to UW, so that's a big pickup for them and uh, playing well. John Humphrey, second team All-American. Jonathan Stewart as a freshman had 1,500 receipt rushing yards for UCLA. Darius Hayward Bay as a freshman at 1,000 yards for Florida. Uh, so both those guys killed it as freshmen. Robert Ayers for Georgia had... Uh, uh, two and a half sacks somehow is all American. Cedric Ellis for Oklahoma. Um, yeah, and that's where we're looking there. If we look freshmen, so Mark Sanchez went to Oregon State, 2,700 yards. Jonathan Stewart, who we already looked at. Hayward Bay, we already looked at. Going to defense here. Nadama Kinsu for Florida. James Laronitis for Ohio State. Uh, Jamal Charles. Walter Thurmond for UCLA as well as a true freshman starter. Okay, and then we want to look at some stats. So Vince Young. Almost a thousand yards more than the next closest receiver. Jay Cutler actually finished third in the country in passing. Michael Bush led the country in rushing yards, receiving. That was the top tackles. Marcus Spears has a D tackle. He gets second sacks. There's the list. And then interceptions. There's the list. Gonna look at team stats really quick here. So points per game. Ohio State led the country. Minnesota and Florida all really explosive as well. Um, best defense, UCF, Ohio, Oklahoma, Georgia, Baylor, Florida. Now, one other thing I like to do at the end of each year is I, I like to sort by all teams and go all players. And now we just kind of kind of look at the best players in the country, and especially the guys who are graduating. So Jay Cutler is actually going to be back, but he had a good year this year. 42 touchdowns, five picks. Marcus Vick is going to be done at Nebraska. He was a three year starter, you know, played really well for them. You know, in this triple option offense, ran for about 700 yards a year as well. Vince Young, we already looked at a raw that is going to wrap up his career. Never won a natty, you know, 102 touchdowns to 15 interceptions, ran for 855 yards, over 800 yards twice, 47 rushing touchdowns. Yeah, he was a killer. They actually had Matt Liner for them next year for one year as a starter as well. Jamarcus Russell at Troy. A uh, pretty good year this year. Uh, Brady Quinn at Pitt, 18 touchdowns, six picks. Um, if we go running back, uh, Lorenzo Booker, oh, almost a thousand yards three years in a row. Reggie got injured this year. He still finished with a thousand yards, but he did go down. So uh, he's got one more year if he comes back. D'Angelo Williams at Oklahoma had a 1,400 yards. Frank Gore at Oklahoma at 1,200 yards this year. So. Michael Bush had 2,000. Um, those were kind of our big time guys there. Wide receivers, Devin Hester fell down to earth this year and still had 1,000 yards receiving. So his last three years were incredible. Uh, Larry Fitz, I don't know if he got injured or yeah, they just didn't really throw it to him as much this year. Robert Meacham at Oklahoma, like they don't even throw to receivers. So Steve Smith at Georgia, yeah. We are going to sim to National Signing Day. We're going to look at where these big time recruits, Tebow, all those guys actually ended up. Then we're going to sim to the start of next season and we're going to look at the coaches. So we're going to see who got fired, who's you know staying on, who's leaving, you know, all that type of stuff. And then uh, and then I'll make the next recruiting class and we'll start all over. OK, National Signing Day. So Bradford ends up at Oklahoma. Huge pickup for them. Stafford, we knew at Nebraska. Locker ends up at Penn State. So not Ohio State. That would have been huge for Ohio State. Obviously, it's really big for Penn State. And then Tim Tebow ends up at Florida. Wow, what a pickup for the Gators. CJ ends up at UCLA. Did DeMarco end up there too? And they get DeMarco, I think. He actually didn't sign. I don't know if DeMarco signed with anyone. That is so weird. LaShawn ends up at Nebraska and Beanie at Army. So yeah, UCLA, Nebraska, get some running backs. Kenny Britt ends up at Oklahoma instead of Ohio State. Ohio State needed him, man. Justin Tucker, he's not one of our guys, but ends up at Florida along with Percy Harvin. So they get 
they get Tebow and Percy just like real life. And then Crabtree ends up at Kansas State. So instead of Texas Tech, going to Kansas State, going to the small schools. Trent Williams ends up at Nebraska. What a pickup for them. Andre Smith, so Penn State and a couple of big time recruits. Sergio or Brandon Graham, Oklahoma. Sergio Kindle, AM. Gerald McCoy, Oklahoma, Geno Atkins, Arizona State, Brandon Spikes, Oklahoma. So Oklahoma did well. Vonte going to uh, Army. Nebraska getting Sherm. Big pickup there. And then we got Taylor Mays going to Nebraska. Chancellor and then Myron Roll. So Oklahoma and Nebraska. And I think Florida as well really had some classes. We're just going to kind of look here. Army gets the number one recruiting class. I mean, they get Brini, Wells, and Vonte. They get Nebraska number two, but they had six five stars. Matthew Stafford, LaShawn McCoy, Taylor Mays, Trent Williams, and Richard Sherman. That is insane. That is insane. Stafford, McCoy, Mays, Williams, Sherm. What a class for Nebraska. Oklahoma right there, though. Gerald McCoy, Brandon Graham, Kenny Britt, Sam Bradford, Brandon Spikes. Not quite on Nebraska's level, but very good. Florida, I mean, they get Percy and Tebow. They got other good players, but that is what they built theirs around. Uh, those three really kind of stood out to me. Penn State, uh, Locker, Andre Smith, and Myron Roll is really good for Penn State as well. So those were kind of the standouts, though. Ohio State didn't do that great as far as getting some big time talent to, you know, like they've won three natties in the last like five, six years. So. Okay, we are going to advance and we're going to go look at the coaches here. So Barry Alvarez staying at USC is the coordinator. Bobby Bowden staying at Central Michigan, but he's got low security right now. Mac Brown safe for now with the Raging Cajun. Pete Carroll low at Colorado. Jim safe for now at Mississippi State. Woody Hayes obviously safe at ohio state he was on the hot seat hot seat last year because he had one bad year when vince young went down but he wins a wins an addy lou holtz low job security ohio state or iowa state don james uh jimmy staying at boise state chip kelly on the hot seat again at oregon already urban obviously safe at florida robert nealon gets fired at tennessee he's now at northern illinois ed orgeron gets fired at lsu he's now at nevada Tom Osborne safe at Nebraska. Joe Paz safe at San Jose State. Gary Patterson safe for now at Oklahoma State. Nick Saban low at Wisconsin. Shem Beckler safe for now at Penn State, but he did just get a good recruiting class. Howard Schnellenberger uh, low security at Georgia Tech. Kirby Smart safe at Georgia. Steve Spurrier now the OC at Nevada. Dabo safe for now at Bama. Barry Switzer safe at Oklahoma. Kyle Whittingham safe at utah so that's our coaches guys that is where we sit and uh, yeah i'm gonna make the next recruiting class right now all right guys so 07 season i made the recruiting class let's just hop right in now this is an interesting class we have a few positions where we usually have quite a few guys where we literally have none like we have no running backs and we have no like inside middle outside linebackers like off the ball linebackers we have a ton of defensive ends we have some pretty good qbs really good safeties um so that is kind of what we're looking like it's been a few days since i recorded the last one i, I run a few channels and i run a do a lot of different stuff on youtube so i kind of go through stages where i'll record a bunch of these for a few days and then i'll take a few days off doing other stuff so it's actually been a few days since i recorded one of these now going through our positions here we got four qbs first one cam newton atlanta georgia we started at florida ended up at um Auburn, obviously, where he had one of the best, you know, single seasons ever. Um, his number one school right now is Minnesota. They've been killing it with QBs. That would be actually hilarious. He might go to Minnesota or Iowa, which would be kind of funny. We have Tyrod Taylor, who played at Vautech. He's from Virginia. He's uh, looking at AM, Ohio State, Minnesota. Minnesota's in on all these QBs. And the and Russell Wilson, Richmond, Virginia. He started out North Carolina State, ended up at Wisconsin for his last year. Obviously, super. Bowl champion with the Seahawks. He's looking at Ohio State, Florida, AM, Minnesota, Alabama. I don't know. I can't remember if Ohio State got one of the QBs last year. I know. I remember Florida just got Tebow, so they don't really need him. And then last but not least, we got Kellen Moore, who's uh he he played at Boise State. He's from the state of Washington. He's looking at Washington, Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Nebraska just got Stafford, so they really don't need him. 
Um, we have no running backs, like I said. We only have two wide receivers, but they are pretty good. So first, Des Bryant obviously played at Oklahoma State, one of the best college receivers ever. Absolutely dominant there. Uh, Texas A&M, Texas, Baylor, Oklahoma, Nebraska. Then we got Golden Tate. One, actually, the Blitnikoff at Notre Dame his last year. It's from Tennessee. He's looking at Purdue, Bama, Mississippi State, and Mizzou. Go down to tight ends. We got Rob Gronkowski. Now, he's from the new state of New York, but he played at Arizona. Um, he looks like he's probably going to stay in the Northwest, though. Penn State, Ohio State, Nebraska, Michigan, Purdue. All those would be great fits. The other one is Aaron Hernandez. It's always like, do I put this guy in the sim? But it's really just we're. Yeah, we're just trying to you know, recapture what college football was, and he was really good in college. So that is it. Uh, he obviously played at Florida with you know Harvin and Tebow and those guys. He's looking at Penn State, Army, Pitt, Syracuse, Navy. Uh, move off to, over to offensive line. We have some good offensive linemen. First, Brian Beluga. He played at Iowa. He's from Illinois. He's going to Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, Purdue. Kind of looking like that. Stay in the Big Ten kind of area. Move on to guards. We got one Mike Pouncey. Now him and Marquise both played at Florida. They're from Lakeland, Florida. Uh, he, one's guard, one center. He's looking at Nebraska, Ohio State, AM. Florida's actually not on his list, even though he's from the state. Then we have Marquise Pouncey, his twin brother, but obviously the game doesn't know they're related, so I can't like make them go to the same school, obviously, like they would in real life. Even if they didn't go to Florida, they would have went somewhere together. He's looking at Florida, Miami. So he's kind of staying in Florida. My, uh, Mike is looking like he's going to go elsewhere. The other is Stefan Wisniewski. He played at Penn State or Steven Wisniewski. Uh, he's looking at Florida, UCLA, Notre Dame. Ohio State. He played at Penn State in real life. Okay. Now moving on to defensive ends. We this is probably this might be the best group of D ends in the whole sim in one class. So first, Carlos Dunlap. He also played on that really good Florida team. He's looking at Oklahoma, Florida, UCLA, Nebraska, Georgia. We have Everson Griffin, who played at USC, Minnesota Vikings. He's looking at Ohio State, Florida, AM, Oklahoma, UCLA. We have Vaughn Miller from Texas, top like three pick by the Broncos, one of the best pass rushers of all time. He played at Texas AM, but he's looking at Texas AM, Arkansas, Baylor, Oklahoma State. We have JJ Watt from Wisconsin, played at Wisconsin. He's looking at Ohio State, Oklahoma, Texas AM, Miami, Florida. And then we have Justin Houston. He's from Georgia, played at Georgia. He's looking at Georgia, Ohio State, Florida, Alabama. And I think that's it, but that is a crazy class. Then we have one interior defensive tackle. It is Mar. Oh, actually, I think we have two. Oh, sorry. Okay, we have one more defensive end. I can't remember if I put him at D tackle or end. Cam Hayward's from Georgia. He plays for the Steelers, obviously. He's looking at Georgia, Florida, Georgia Tech, Bama. Then we do have one D tackle. It is going to be Marvin Austin. He was a huge recruit. He ended up playing at North Carolina. Um, big defensive tackle. Penn State, Ohio State, Virginia Tech, Purdue. Purdue seems to be in on a lot of these guys. Okay, then we have no outsides or middle linebackers. We have only one corner. It is Joe Hayden. Now, he actually played at Florida, like all those, you know, that really good group they had. Uh, he's looking at Nebraska, Ohio State, Florida, Oklahoma, Michigan. Then we go to our safety position. This is a really good group of safeties. First, we have Earl Thomas from Orange, Texas, played at Texas, Seahawks, LOB. He's looking at Ohio State, Nebraska, Florida, AM, Penn State. We have Harrison Smith, who still plays for the Minnesota Vikings. He went to Notre Dame. He's from Knoxville, Tennessee. He's looking at Florida, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Georgia. And then last but not least, we have Eric Berry. He's from Georgia. He played at Tennessee, one of the best college football safeties ever. Absolute freak on the back end. He's looking at Georgia, Florida, Alabama, and South Carolina. So that is the group, guys. Really cool class. Lots of really interesting players who, yeah, it'll be wild to see where they all go. Okay, we are going to sim to the start of the season. Okay, now let's look at the preseason poll. So Ohio State ended up winning last year. They're fifth national championship uh florida's coming in at the number one team but they're an a minus overall not even a great offense they are super young though uh then we have an Iowa, ohio state defending national champs a plus a plus defense is decent oklahoma a plus across the board a and m actually looks really good this year a nebraska is going to be incredible in offense this year a plus you know ucla they have not went away they are still they just made the natty last year auburn looks decent minnesota looks pretty good stanford looks all right notre dame looks okay georgia looks really good a pluses across the board miami um then just a bunch of teams that look pretty good armies and an a still we honestly should look at them a minus for texas yeah that kind of looks like our big schools i definitely gotta look at army uh let's look at the heisman watch 
So VY trying to win back-to-back -back Heisman's. Uh, he and he won the Natty last year. He had one of the best college football seasons we've ever seen in the sim. 4,600 yards, 48 touchdowns, three picks, with 668 yard dressing and 14 rushing touchdowns. Like, oh my god goodness he was crazy we got michael bush uh also for nebraska but i don't even think he's gonna be their starter this year reggie should be back so we got red our vince uh michael bush jonathan stewart who had a crazy freshman year darius hayward bay who had a crazy freshman year um joe thomas at ohio state davin joseph at nebraska going down dante whitner at georgia jamal charles what did he do for his best kick returner in the country last year kind of makes sense 30 yards per kick return last year and at a punt and kick return for a touchdown so absolute freak at washington jay cutler still at minnesota d'angelo williams at oklahoma jonathan uh john sullivan at ohio state uh not as much on defense of like our real life guys but there we go that is our all americans let's look at championship contenders here so Florida, 1135, Nebraska, like rate top five, Army, right in that top 10 range, Ohio State, top five for the whole time, UCLA, basically top five, Oklahoma, basically top five. Like it's basically right now, the best, best schools for a while have been Florida, Nebraska, Ohio State, UCLA, Oklahoma. Georgia was like in the mix, but I think those five really are just like a cut above everyone else right now. Stanford's an A plus, but uh, yeah, those, those guys like they they, they're they're just kind of on a different level right now i definitely got to look at stanford's roster and i want to look at armies because they're consistently around the top 10 here they're recruit like okay yeah they do have chad henny and richard mendenhall eugene monroe okay yeah they have a lot of talent like mendenhall's only a sophomore so army putting in work um bama i didn't even look at them because i was trying to get to army bama they still have calvin johnson he's barely dead anything he's a thousand yards in two years like that's combined so maybe not the best choice to go to there florida now florida you see they don't have those high overalls really right now but they are so young they got freaking true freshman tim tebow they don't really have anything like i mean this guy's a sophomore he looks like he's pretty, pretty good uh they have a really good senior receiver with Don darius hayward bay and percy harvin freshman sophomore um, they have a ton of young talent on defense as well. Nadama Kansu, Keith Rivers. Uh, yeah, so this team isn't going anywhere. They're they're still going to be around. They might have a bit of a down year this year, but um, Georgia, super talented. Whitner, Crom look at their top four there. Two really good running backs. Whitner, Cromarty, Robert Ayers coming off the edge. Malcolm Jenkins on the back end. Uh, yeah, this team's loaded. Do they have a QB? Yeah, they have a 90 overall junior. So yeah, they have a nice QB this year. I mean, this could be the year. Georgia has won one natty, but they haven't really been in the mix as much as you would have thought. But this could be the year for them. LSU, not really up to much. Uh, Miami really kind of taking a nosedive a little bit at the U. Michigan, uh, Ray Rice. Yeah, they're okay, but nothing crazy. Minnesota, they still have Jay Cutler. Uh, they don't have Larry Fitzgerald anymore, but like they have Jay Cutler and a lot of good talent around them. Mississippi State, no. Um, Nebraska these guys are wicked on offense like we got to give a breakdown of this so they did actually lose Marcus Vick but they have like a good starter this year they have a sophomore and they have Matt Stafford like they are loaded at quarterback uh they have Reggie Bush and Michael Bush with a young LaShawn McCoy on the way they have Deshaun Jackson at a uh, receiver with a couple other good seniors a sophomore they're gonna bring along with Deshaun uh 92 overall tight end they have Trent Williams they have Davin Joseph 99 94 guard 99 center with a 92 backup and their tackles just okay like that offense is absolutely cracked if nebraska is gonna win one this is a year they definitely have a shot they also have landry on defense um they have sal they have some good defensive players but it is on offense where they are truly insane right now uh notre dame just kind of all right ohio state they're trying to go back to back they have 299 overall qbs i really hope they don't end up starting this chris miller over vince young in his senior year 
Uh, they have an 89. Honestly, like this guy's pretty good. They have a nice free yeah, hat. Like they're good at QB. They have Adrian Peterson in his junior year. He's kind of been getting hurt. Like he's barely played, but he's obviously a freak show. They don't have a ton of like big time receivers. They have these like all these sophomores that are kind of slowly getting better. They have Zach Miller at tight ends. They don't really have the weapons on offense, but they have really good O-line. Sullivan, Thomas, like defensive end Mario will like look at this in 97 95 their top end talent James Laronitis their top end talent is insane to have that many 99s and 90s and a 97 is actually cracked so Ohio State going to be dangerous Oklahoma going to be dangerous D'Angelo Williams Michael Griffin Robert Meacham Glenn Dorsey talent all the way down they don't oh they have true freshman Sam Bradford starting at QB so yeah, they don't really throw, but like they have Robert Meacham, like he had 174 yards last year. They literally don't throw, but hey, they have a lot of talent. Penn State has been, didn't they just get a big time QB? I feel like, yeah, they just got Jake Locker. So that could be, you know, the becoming of them becoming pretty good. Uh, the start of them becoming pretty good. We got, uh, okay, we got Stanford. They got two nasty QBs. Our one, Dennis Dixon, doesn't even look like, yeah, he's not even really playing. It's this Fred, oh, and Swan hasn't played before either. They got Ray Maluga. They don't really, they're like a top 10 team. I don't know if I totally see that, but I mean, they have really good QBs. Uh, Darrell Rivas on Tennessee. They have some decent players, but they've never really put it together. Texas looks okay, but Colt McCoy, Playing with Mario Manningham, that's really what they got to build around and start winning games on the back of those two. Uh, we look at AM, they have a 99 QB, they got Reggie Nelson, they have linebacker, another receiver, a running back. They're pretty good, they're definitely good. So they're gonna be in the running. UCLA, they lose Rodgers, they still have Matt Leinert for a year. They got Lawrence Jackson, Mac, uh, Max Unger, Jonathan Stewart. So Who's, they have a sophomore QB who's coming at 81 speed. He's actually going to fit their system really good. So he'll probably be a two-year starter. They just got CJ Spiller. They have this walker. Like they have a three-headed monster running back. Uh, a couple of nice receivers. This guy's only a sophomore too. So UCLA, I really don't think is going anywhere. USC, total disappointment. They're ass right now. Um, And that is kind of our big squads this year. So yeah, I don't know. I think Ohio State, Oklahoma, Nebraska... I think Nebraska and Ohio State are my two favorite teams as far as like rosters, which rosters I like the most this year. But uh, OK, we're going to go to week nine and then we'll see. All right. So here we are in week nine. Let's take a look at the recruits here. Some big time recruits are going to set the stage. So let's see. Cam Auburn fans, close your eyes. There is a good chance he is going to join Alabama. That could save Bama because they've been ass this whole sim. Tyrod Taylor going to Army. Army is doing some wild shit, man. They are up to stuff. Wow. Okay. We got Russell Wilson at Ohio State. They have a ton of QBs right now. That's a great fit. And Kellen Moore. Look at, okay. He's not really getting heavily recruited right now. Um, running back. We have none. Wide outs. N Dez, Nebraska. Oklahoma. Oh, dude. Don't go to Oklahoma, Nebraska. <laughs> You're just never going to get the ball. I mean, they keep getting receivers. I don't get how, but there you go. Golden Tate, Georgia, Mississippi State. Tight ends, Gronk going to Penn State. They just got Locker last year. That could be a nasty com uh, combo there. Uh, Aaron Hernandez, Navy or Army. Apparently, uh, Aaron Hernandez wants to, you know, you know, serve his country. So that's good. Brian Beluga, Purdue, Wisconsin, Illinois. Guard, Mar Pouncey going to Minnesota. They're, they're in on some of these dudes. Pound other Pouncey looking like Florida, Bama, Kentucky. Uh, Wisniewski, a and Defensive ends, Dunlap, either, you. oh, looks like UCLA pretty much assuredly. Everson Griffin, UCLA or Ohio State. Vaughn Miller in at Texas. Big pickup for Texas. J.J. Watt, Ohio State. Uh, Justin Houston, Ohio State or Bama. And then Cam Hayward, Bama. So Bama all of a sudden, we might see a late push here. Not really late. We're only about halfway through, a little over halfway through the sim, but maybe Bama will be good in the second half. Purdue gets Marvin Austin. Cornerback Joe Hayden going to Oklahoma. 
Free safety, Earl going to AM, Harrison Smith going to Florida, Eric Berry, either Florida or Auburn. Um, and that is it. That is our class. So, wow. If Alabama with Dabo all of a sudden making some moves out there, they get some of those defenders along with Cam Newton. Okay, so Minnesota, number one team, 7-0. and But they're in the Big Ten. Like, they still got to play Nebraska, Wisconsin, Florida three weeks in a row. UCLA, they have pretty easy schedule coming up here. Oklahoma, okay, I just seen Oklahoma's unranked. BYU, Purdue, Army, Memphis, UCF. Oh my goodness, that is an insane group of undefeated. So Ohio State, one loss. Uh, who does Ohio State play? Um, they still play Purdue, but they get they can knock off an undefeated Michigan. Yeah, they, they have a tough schedule. Baylor has a loss. USC only has one loss. They lost to Texas, but okay, we have a lot of one-loss teams. I think I didn't see anything that super jumped out. We'll probably just go to conference championships. Reggie Bush leading the way for the Heisman. Tim Tebow in fifth. Jay Cutler would be cool. I'd love to see Reggie win it this year. As a senior, he's averaging 119 yards a game. Healthy this year. So Reggie leading Nebraska. Let's go season stats here. So Tim Tebow leading the country in passing at Florida. Oh my goodness. Uh, Peyton Hillis at Arkansas leading the way. D'Angelo and then Reggie's in the top five as well. That's for receiving, tackles, sacks, interceptions um we'll quickly look at some team stats here points per game nebraska leading the way do they have the most them in ucla just running all over everybody nebraska byu ucf ucla minnesota defensively ucf army memphis baylor uh nebraska is up there yeah so we're gonna sim two conference championship weekend and then we'll see where we're at all righty so here we are conference championship weekend let's look at the top 25 we byu and ucla man this team is insane i don't understand it like they are by far not the most talented team this year and they're if they beat Stanford, they're going to play BYU. BYU is basically guaranteed in. Um, Ohio State needs to beat Minnesota, and they need a UCLA loss. They'll be in. If Ohio State lost, I'm guessing actually Minnesota would get in. Nebraska's out. Uh, Bama, three losses. Army only has... They lost last week, or they would have been undefeated. Where's Florida? Florida, four losses this year. And Oklahoma, I think they lost a lot of games. Um, so, yeah, we're going to watch Ohio State, uh, Minnesota. But that is definitely the game to watch. Nebraska just misses out. They they had two losses compared to the other two guys who won. So, it's basically UCLA has to beat Stanford. Uh, if they do, they're in. Um, they'll play BYU. They do. They win by three. So it's going to be a BYU-UCLA final. UCLA has made their like ninth national championship. I, I don't even understand how this is possible. They have a good team this year, but I, I put Texas, I put Oklahoma in the conference to try to give them more competition, and they just keep winning. So there it is. We got Ohio State. We got uh, Minnesota. So v Vince Young is not going to make a second national championship game. I mean, he had some crazy stats last year, but uh, I don't know. I mean, BYU goes undefeated. Probably should have been a rematch of Ohio State UCLA, but it is what it is. Minnesota actually is the number one offense in the country. Uh, Ohio State's offense honestly isn't that crazy. Uh, really good defense, a little bit better than Minnesota's. That's their top three. Here's theirs. Here's the injury report. Nothing too crazy. So no natty built bid on the line, but uh, I mean, win the Big Ten. That's always important. Finish is probably the number two team in the country, whichever team wins this game, if they win their bowl game. Jay Cutler versus Vince Young, both guys last college football, last Big Ten game at least. Uh, let's go to the end of the first quarter here. Ohio State, 7-0 lead. Ohio State, 10-0 lead. Uh, here's a third and three for Minnesota. We'll watch from here. Golden Gophers, they've had an insane run of QBs. They had Joe Maurer and Jay Cutler. They also had Alex Smith, who was a backup his whole career. Oh, that's a nice little play. Play action, little arrow route out to the outside. Jay Cutler fires it in. Okay, let's keep, let's go to the end of the quarter here. So it's 10 7 now. Third and 12 here for the Ohio State. Let's see if VY can get something done here. Oh, Vince Young's not playing. I didn't see an injury. 
Unless he got injured in the first quarter, which would be annoying. It's actually a really nice throw, but really, VY. I'm, I'm confused. Where's Vince Young? Oh, they... That's so lame. They didn't even start Vince Young this whole season in his last year. He's thrown for 100 yards for this Miller guy. Oh, my goodness. I'm putting... I put in Vince Young just because... Wow, that is insane. That's so annoying. 17-7. Oh, my gosh. I'm just going to go to the end of the quarter here. 17-14. They might not have lost. They might have made the natty. Um... He's literally reigning Heisman winner. Just comes off one of the best college football seasons of all time. Literally. He was the number one recruit in the country coming out. Fire, Not the best pass there as far as getting aggressive. But wow, that is so stupid. And there's nothing I can do. I Like, I can't go in and affect the depth chart on the teams I don't control. So I, I literally couldn't even start Vince Young. I was a tiny bit worried because they were both 99s. But uh, I didn't actually think that would happen. Um, but it does. And here we go. Ohio State up 20 to 14. And, like, they had Vince Young and Adrian Peterson. And they didn't want to start VY. Okay, let's see what Cutler can do on third and 20 here. It is a, like, 13-point game. Cutler is in the Heisman running. I don't know. We checked it midseason. Oh, my goodness. He goes down and goes down hard by that Ohio State. That's Lamar Woodley up front. It should have been. This really should have been Ohio State, uh, UCLA, and the Natty. Um, Vince Young, third and eight. Okay, here's Cutler. Second and five. First and ten. Second and ten. Third and five here. Let's see what Jay can do. Trips to the bottom here for Cutler. Shotgun drops back. Guy in the flat. Little hook. Oh, he breaks a tackle. He's gonna be about a yard short. I'd probably go for this if I was uh controlling Minnesota, but usually the computer does not get aggressive in the first half or till the fourth quarter. Sorry. Uh, there we go. So Minnesota down 10 now. BY third and six. This is just so annoying. And Vince and Vince got hurt hit. His second year, he got hurt first game in. So he basically, we didn't get to see him for two years. He was supposed to be a four-year starter. Fires that in for the first down. Like, he could have put up so just His two, his freshman and junior years were two of the best years we've ever seen. I know I'm going off on about this, but it is just annoying me. Uh, second and nine. Third and 13 here. Going to be in shotgun. Three to the bottom. Drops back. Fires over the middle to Zach Miller, I believe. Yep, going to be short, but get it back up to a 13-point game. Miller has 108 today. Field goal. Let's see what Jay can do. First and second, 11. Third and 11 here for Jay. Jay's got to make a play. 555 left. Minnesota needs something big from Big Jay Cutler here. Drops back. Slides in the pocket. That's a nice ball. Gets it down to fourth and one. They probably will go for this. Yeah, they are going to go for it, so we'll watch. Four down. You got Mario Williams, Lamar Woodley, Jay Cutler, and Shotgun here. Gonna hand it off. Gets downhill. Oh my God. He gets the first down, but gets absolutely plastered. Okay, we'll keep going here. 20 yards, second and 10, third and 10. Minnesota scores here. I mean, you score, you get a stop. You're right there, right? Down 13. Like, you could actually get it, go get a go ahead touchdown. Gonna do a little screen pass. He actually has some room. Oh, he probably should have cut that to the outside more. Fourth and four. Probably just want to go for this. Like, don't kick a field goal. No, nope, they're going to go for it. Jay Cutler, 277 in a score. Fourth and four. Probably going to have to pass this. I would not risk a run, but they're going to run like a draw. And he's short. Great fill by the linebacker. And that is basically going to do it. Put this game out of reach. And Ohio State gonna win um obvi oh they actually get a quick stop there minnesota they did not i thought they would be able to like burn some okay and then minnesota scores oh my gosh and then ohio state gets a 102 yard kick return touchdown minnesota scores but then yeah now they're gonna let run it out so minnesota fought till the end vince young i put you in vince screw Woody Hayes for not playing Vince Young this year. You probably wouldn't have lost a game and you would probably be playing UCLA in the national championship instead of BYU. But that is on you, Woody Hayes. You could have had the greatest two-year run of a quarterback we've ever seen, but instead you played just some rando.
He has won five national championships, so I can't really talk too much. But uh, yeah, Vince Young was actually the other guy played maybe better than Vince today. Uh, 119, two scores for AP. Um, Zach Miller had a big day, 108. Minnesota had a couple of big time receivers. Jay Cutler, 391, three touchdown. Cutler was really good for the for the Golden Gophers. So BYU UCLA, it's just insane that UCLA is back in the game. They've still only won, I think, two in this run. They have won three. They won one in the 80s, but uh crazy they've only won like two of these eight appearances so far i think this will be their ninth so they're trying to go two, three of nine maybe possibly though they're gonna go two of nine which would be just nuts i don't think they're gonna lose to byu though we'll go look at byu's roster really quick because we didn't check on them preseason they were not on my radar at all walker wins it from ucla beats out reggie bush walker 2100 yards big year but oh, i would like to see reggie win it's wild walker was starting instead of jonathan stewart's so i wonder if stewart got hurt oklahoma goes seven and five with that talent that's kind of wild it is going to be ucla byu let's yeah let's go look at their roster really quick i mean ucla does have a lot more talent i'm sure but honestly they're not like the most talented team like ohio state oklahoma had more talent for sure byu big time running back guard center guard running back they have they have some good players for sure uh qb they have a decent senior quarterback so obviously ucla is going to be a heavy favorite but as far as as good as they have been they have not been great in natties they, they don't get it done usually so we'll see this is like their ninth appearance in the last 13 14 years something insane like that so yeah let's see what let's see what happens yeah this is their ninth appearance since 1995 and we're in 2007 it is just insane so they have the second best offense in the country number one rush offense be and they have the number two defense so this team like I, I i just don't even get it they are talented they are not like miles ahead of everyone but they they, they just don't lose they just keep winning over and over except in the natty they lose they're two and eight right now in the natty in this run three of nine doesn't sound too bad two of nine would be horrible it'd be two and seven or three and six matt leinert starting now for rogers rogers never actually won one as the starter so um leinert trying to do something rogers wasn't able to do we're gonna go through the first quarter here ucla seven nothing ten nothing byu ten seven ucla is driving here fourth and one and they're actually gonna punt this so byu they're gonna punt ucla is gonna punt byu is gonna punt punt fest right here uh ucla got the ball back third and six first and ten second and six third and nine let's see what leinert can do here on third and nine up 10 7 wishbone uh liner lefty drops back fires over the middle nice little crosser is that guy oh that's jonathan stewart as he sits down and uh you know big pick up there five yard rush first and 10 10 yards second and 23 third and 24 uh yeah they, they're gonna have to oh they missed their field goal but i don't know this ucla or byu team cannot get anything going oh now they are right when i say that third and five here for BYU chance to maybe take the lead going into the half UCLA just can't perform they should be blowing these guys out the way they play in the regular season and they get to the big game and BYU just throws one in there they got 50 seconds to take a freaking lead here over UCLA five yard and they get in the ucla you got a you know a minute here okay they hit a 32 yarder and then a 14 yarder first and goal from the one you got 14 seconds one timeout wow this would be an incredible drive 10 seconds nine don't let the clock wind down Leinert, why would you do that <laughs> just throws it out of the end zone as hard as he can instead of like why not run the ball there you have one timeout run the ball you get stopped kick your field goal or even you still have a little bit of time for one more try oh oh my god he goes down timeout so it's gonna be a one point lead byu if ucla has been so bad at kicking field goals in this, these games too if i remember correctly um they do get make this field goal though okay 
BY or UCLA does get the ball here. They get stopped, though. They're going to punt. BYU punts back. Third and four. Interception. Liner picked off. Second and 10. First and 10. Second and 13. Third and eight. Probably just out of field goal range for BYU. They're going split backs here. They, uh, they would love to convert this, obviously. Even if they could get five-ish yards and they'd be in field goal range. Like, that's... Other than a first down, that's basically perfect. That should be a pretty makeable field goal here. They go for it and get stopped, though, and UCLA gets the ball. Walker, Walker, Stewart, Stewart, Liner, just running the ball down their throat, though. This is their way. First and 10, second and 14, third and nine. So they kind of got stopped there as far as running the ball. Now they're in third and nine. They can take a lead with a field goal, but you know they want to try to convert here. Motion a guy out. Liner going to drop back. Slide. Finds his open. Man, that is a huge pick up there. Is that Stewart again? Using him as a receiver. 60 yards receiving almost. Minus two, three yards. You got third and goal from the three. They got stopped at the goal line last time. I mean, you do not want to take three here. You want to be able to punch this in if you're UCLA, obviously. But let's see. Speed option. Matt Liner turns the corner and he gets in. UCLA and their wishbone offense get it done. They go for two and actually don't get it. Oh, I think this, yeah, UCLA got the ball back. Third and two, pick it up. Eight yards, third and one, fourth and one. They go for it, pick it up, second and 14. Third and 13 here for UCLA. Trying to go up two scores. A field goal puts them up nine, actually. So that will be two scores. So even a field goal is going to be pretty huge here. Liner drops back a weird ass throw to the outside. I mean, a, a, about a 38 yard field goal, maybe. They do not have a good field goal kicker, I don't think. He already missed one today, and he missed another one. A 40 yarder and he missed it. Their kicker is ass. 15, second and 10, 10 yards, third and 14. They're in field goal range ish. So, I mean, eh, you could kick a field goal. If, yeah, I mean, if it's fourth and 10, you're probably got to take the points. Uh, but he fires it over the middle. Oh my, oh my gosh. Now, what do you, I think you go for this now. Fourth and two. You try to take the lead right here if you are BYU, and that is what they're going to do. Wow, they're going un under center, single back, double tight look. QB drops back. I take off, take off. He's going end zone. Oh, it should have been picked, but it's not going to matter. UCLA is going to get the stop, and now they have the number one rush offense in the country. Can they just take the air out of the football? We got third and four here. UCLA trying to win. They bit this is their ninth appearance in the national championship in freaking like 14 years. They've only won two. They're trying to take the monkey off the back. This is crazy. They're, they're better than BYU on paper, but they need a first down. They're gonna run draw. Oh my god. He stuffed. Oh, and then he fell fourth in inches. He broke tackles, fell off. Oh, that guy's ran 16 carries for 16 yards, and they're punting to BYU. Oh, my. Here we go. BYU, third and four, first and 10, second and eight, first and 10, second and four, first and 10, second and one. We're going to watch from here. 50 seconds left. They need a touchdown, so it's four down territory the whole way. They have one timeout. They can run the ball still if they want. It's a touchdown or nothing. Fires it to the outside. That's going to be a first down inside the five. If UCLA loses this one, missing two field goals, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. Uh, okay, trips to the top. Drops back. Time. He's going to take off. Oh, that was horrible. That was not good. Ran into his lineman. Uh, wow. They're going to be at about the nine. Oh, no. He's going to spike it. Don't spike it. Oh, no. Okay. So you got two shots to the end zone there. Two shots. Game on the line. Natty on the line. UCLA trying to avoid you know a horrible loss. BYU trying to be just the upset of the year. 
goes end zone and that's oh. okay here it is george wallace you are at your last play that is why i hate that spike there here it is ucla brought the dogs the last play forced this guy to get it out of his hands here it is now or never natty on the line what's it gonna be that's not going to do it. There it is. UCLA makes the tackle and they are finally going to get it done. I mean, they've won three now, which is good. Uh, but they could have won freaking nine. So, but there it is. Boom. Zero yard, third and six. And that is it. UCLA gets it done. That is their fourth national championship of the sim. Like I said, out of this run, they've won three. And then they won one in like the late. 80s, I think. They won one in 1989. Then they took a few years off of not making the natty. Then in 1995, their run started, and this was their ninth appearance in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 years. Nine appearances in 13 years with three wins, but nine appearances crazy so liner gets it done some a rod was not able to do wallace i played pretty good for them i mean they were overmatched to have a chance to win it at the end liner okay yeah liner didn't play great today uh i mean it's walker and stewart played really good stewart especially when you consider his receiving uh like his second leading receiver on the team but hey they have a really good defense they got it done and ucla wins it okay end of the season we'll just kind of do all our wrap-up stuff here so ucla wins it all ohio state nebraska byu minnesota AM, ucf syracuse georgia it really should have been a rematch ohio state ucla would have been such a good game Heisman winner, we see it was a UCLA back. Marcus Walker, uh, Reggie gets second. All Americans, uh, Brady Quinn in his senior year at Pitt. 38 touchdowns, three picks, big year. Reggie ends up with 1,400 yards, 24 scores. Calvin finally has a big year, 1331 and 17 touchdowns, and they might be getting a uh, freaking wow zach miller 1253 yards as a tight end but calvin might be playing with cam newton for a year next year joe thomas uh davin joseph max unger for ucla uh keep going down here and then if we go second team matt miller guy from ohio state peyton hillis at arkansas 1700 yards big year uh john sullivan there we go that's defense so we got freshmen, so Tim Tebow, freshman All-American, 3,600 yards, 32 touchdowns, 937 on the ground and 12 scores. CJ Spiller for UCLA gets 486. Uh, Trent Williams for Nebraska. Sergio Kindle for AM. Gerald McCoy for Oklahoma. Vontae Davis for Army. Uh, yeah, so that was the All-Americans. So Brady Quinn ended up leading the country in passing along with Jay Cutler and then Jamarcus Russell. Rushing leaders, D'Angelo Williams gets second. Peyton Hillis gets fourth. Uh, Calvin and Zach Miller, four and five in receiving yards there. Sacks and INTs. Now, if we look at team stats, Minnesota, Nebraska, UCLA, Tulane for offensive points, defense, Army, Baylor, UCLA, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Georgia. Okay, going to look at some of our guys here. So, Jay, we, Jay had, uh, yeah, 41 touchdowns, 3,800 yards, huge year. Vince didn't freaking play. Like, I'm so mad about that. Brady, we looked at. Matt really only got it to start one year. I mean, and they barely threw the ball. He didn't run for 500 yards. Jamarcus at Troy actually had a really nice senior year. Pat White with the Bulls, 2,700 yards, 22 touchdowns. Chris Leak at Duke, 1,700 yards, not bad. Um, Dennis Dixon, I don't think really got to play this year. Chad Henney at Army, 3,200 yards, 28 scores have been really good. Running back. Uh, Michael Bush had a really good, I mean, he had three years, almost a thousand yard each year, including a 2000 yard season. Reggie, AP, 1100 yards, seven scores this year. D'Angelo, we looked at. MJD at Utah State, 1300 yards this year. Peyton Hillis, we looked at. Marshawn at Arizona State. Oh my God. I mean, his first two years were actually pretty good, especially his freshman year for 1200 yards. That freshman is pretty nasty. Robert Meacham, 386. They just do not throw the ball. Uh, Ted Ginn Jr., 1,000 yards. Steve Smith, uh, 450. Calvin, uh, 1,300. Early Doucette, 
926. Tight end, Zach Miller. We've seen 1,200 yards. Absolutely nuts. Fred Davis, 519. He ends Lawrence Jackson, five and a half sacks this year. Willamar Woodley had six and a half this year. Brian Arakpo at Arkansas, two and a half. Derek Harvey at Michigan. Mm, Calais Campbell at Mizzou, seven sacks this year for him. Right end, Mario Williams wrapping it up at Ohio State, four and a half sacks. Robert Ayers at Georgia, five sacks this year. He tackles Glenn Dorsey at Oklahoma, still going to be back next year. Uh, Sue going to be back for Florida as well. Left outside, Keith Rivers at Florida. Middle, Patrick Willis. There's his stats. Jordan Mayo, Lawrence Timmons. Right outside, Ernie Sims at Oklahoma. Cornerback, Antonio Cromartie, done at Georgia. Jarrell Revis, one more year at Tennessee. Free safety, Michael Griffin, done at Oklahoma. Reggie Nelson, done at AM. There's his stats. Laron Landry, done at Nebraska. Malcolm Jenkins, uh, two more years still at Georgia. Dante Whitner, done at Georgia. Kenny Phillips, Bama, still two more years for them. So that is our rosters, guys. That's kind of the players who's leaving. Uh, let's go. We're going to go to National Signing Day now. Okay, National Signing Day. Okay, and Cam, I think that's Georgia State beats out Alabama for Cam Newton. Tyrod's going to Army. We knew Russell and Kellen didn't even get recruited. I don't even know if he signed anywhere, which would be just annoying um wow okay crazy uh wild no running backs wideouts des going to oklahoma you're never going to get the ball golden take going to georgia tight end gronk we knew penn state uh hernandez going to navy beluga going to purdue uh pouncey going to minnesota other pouncey going to florida was going to a and m UCLA gets Dunlap, Griffin, Ohio State, Vaughn, we knew, JJ, Ohio State, Justin Houston goes to Auburn, and Cam Hayward goes to Oklahoma, Austin goes to Purdue, cornerback Joe Hayden goes to Oklahoma, free safety, Earl goes to AM, Harrison Smith, Florida, Eric Berry ends up at Louisville, so that is our uh, group. Oklahoma, number one class, Ohio State, Minnesota, Texas, Texas Sam, USC, Florida is right there. So that is where we are sitting, guys. Now we're just going to go to the start of the 08 season, and we're going to look at the coaches before I make the next recruiting class. Okay, so here we go. Barry Alvarez, now the head coach at Rice. Bobby Bowden, head coach at Virginia. Mac Brown still with the Raging Cajuns. Pete Carroll now at Louisiana Monroe. Jim Harbaugh still at Mississippi State. Woody Hayes safe at Ohio State. Lou Holtz hot seat at Iowa State. Uh, Don James now head coach at Kent State. Jimmy Johnson safe for now at Boise State. Chip Kelly now the OC at Memphis. Urban Meyer safe at Florida. Robert Neeland hot seat at NIU. Uh, Ed Orgeron safe at nevada tom osborne safe at nebraska joe paul on the hot seat at san jose state gary patterson safe at osu nick saban safe at wisconsin shem beckler low actually at penn state he's been there for 12 years uh he did just get gronkowski and he has jake locker so they probably will have a better year next year howard schnellenberger uh low at georgia tech kirby safe at georgia Spurrier, Nevada, OC. Dabo, safe at Bama. Barry Switzer, safe at OU. Kyle Whittingham, safe for his second run at Utah. So that is our coaches, guys. Uh, Going to make the next recruiting class. All right, guys. 08 season recruiting class is created. Let's get into it. Now, this is a good recruiting class. It is very offensive heavy. So a lot of quarterbacks, wide receivers. We have 10 we have five quarterbacks, five wide receivers. So almost half our players are those two positions. We got two running backs, two tight ends, three offensive linemen. So a ton on offense. Very few defenders, but some good ones who are on D. Okay, first looking at QBs. We like I said, we got five of them. First, so first we have Terrell Pryor. Played at Ohio State. Was one of like big time recruits of all time at the QB position. He's looking at Army, Navy, Ohio State, Pitt, and Minnesota. We got Andrew Luck, of course. You know, went to Stanford, 
was kind of like him, John Elway. We've seen both them in this sim now are like kind of the two like and Peyton Manning, who we've also seen. We're kind of like the no doubt QB prospects um, in the NFL draft. He's looking at Mizzou, Auburn, BYU, Texas, UCLA, Florida. So some of the high schools are not really the most, you know, well thought of schools. And we have EJ Manuel. Now he played at Florida State. He's from the state of Virginia. He's going, maybe going to go Vautech, Georgia, Alabama. If you went to Vautech, they've been getting some decent recruits last few years. We also have Robert Griffin III. Now he played for the Baylor Bears, won a Heisman Trophy, second overall pick by Washington, the NFL draft. Super dynamic college football player. He's looking at AM, Texas, UCLA, Nebraska, Minnesota. Then last but not least, well, maybe least, um, we have Blaine Gabbert. Now he played at Mizzou. Really high pick in the NFL draft. He's looking at Tennessee, Nebraska, Mizzou, Oklahoma, and Ohio State. Uh, if we go to running backs, we got two. First, Mark Ingram, one of Heisman, playing for Alabama. Was kind of on the, this is kind of where start in real life Alabama really started to take off. In this recruiting class, they got him, they got um, Julio Jones, and this is kind of the beginning of them, but not looking like he's going to go to Alabama here. It's looking like Michigan, Purdue, uh, Miami of Ohio, or Bowling Green. And the other one is La Michael James. Now, he's from Texas, but he went to Oregon, was kind of on those early Oregon teams that were really good. He's looking at AM Texas. Texas, LSU, Arkansas, Oklahoma. Okay, if we go wide receiver, we have a good group of wideouts. First, we have Michael Floyd. He's from Minnesota, but he actually played at Notre Dame. He's looking at uh, Florida, Alabama, AM, Georgia, LSU. We have Julio Jones. Now, he was with Mark Ingram, went to Alabama. He is from the state of Alabama. Uh, you know, one of the best wide receiver recruits ever, one of the best college receivers ever, one of the best NFL receivers ever. So huge recruit. He's looking at Georgia, UCF, Florida, Alabama, Ohio State. We have Justin Blackman. Now, Blackman played at Oklahoma State. Really good you know, one or two year run there. Uh, you know, really good college player. He's looking at Texas, Texas A&M, OU, and Baylor in Nebraska. We got Kendall Wright, also from Texas. Now he played at Baylor with RG3. He's looking at Texas, LSU, Arizona State, Colorado. And I think that is, oh no, we got one more. And our last one is Marvin Jones. Now Marvin Jones played at Cal. He's from California. You know, played with the Lions, Jaguars. He's looking at UCLA, SC, uh, Ohio State, Nebraska. Okay, then we go down to tight end. We got two. First, Travis Kelsey. He's, he's actually the number one player in the class right now. Not number one tight end, number one overall player. Obviously, just won another Super Bowl with the Chiefs. Uh, you know, one of the best tight ends of all time. He actually played at Cincinnati, though. He's looking at Ohio State, Bowling Green, Ohio, West Virginia. So some small schools and Ohio State. Then we got Kyle Rudolph, also from Ohio. He played at Notre Dame, Vikings, you know, Long time in the NFL. He's looking at Ohio State, Florida, the U, BYU, Illinois. Move over to offensive linemen. We got three tackles. First, Barrett Jones, Memphis, Tennessee, played for Alabama. Uh, he's looking at Memphis, Middle Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, Georgia Tech. We got Matt Khalil from Cali, played at uh, USC. Ryan Khalil's his older brother. He's looking at USC, UCLA, and Nebraska. Then last, we have Tyron Smith, who also played at USC with Khalil. He's uh, you know still playing for the Cowboys right now. R amazing left tackle. He's looking at Ohio State, UCLA, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Florida. Uh, we have no interior offensive lineman, and we only have one defensive end. It, oh, no, sir. We got two. We got Courtney Upshaw, who all, also went to Bama with uh, Julio and Mark Ingram. He's looking at Florida, Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama. We got Daquan Bowers, who's like the number one recruit coming out of high school in this class, like by some services. Really good D end. He's kind of a bust in college. He was good, but never like that that level. He went to Clemson. Uh, he's looking at Ohio State, Oklahoma, Florida, UCLA, Georgia. Uh, we go to D tackles. We got one. We got Marcel Darius. Also went to Alabama. You see, all I'm, over the next few years, you're gonna hear me say this guy went to Alabama a ton for basically the rest of the sim. Uh, from from the state as well. He's looking at. UCF, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, uh, Ohio State. We have no linebackers at all. We got two corners. First, Patrick Peterson from the state of Florida. Played at LSU, though. Um, one of the best corners of all time, college, NFL. Uh, he's looking at Florida, Alabama, AM, LSU, Georgia. We got Janoris Jenkins from Florida. He played at Florida as well. Uh, really good uh, corner in college and in the NFL. Florida, Oklahoma, UCLA, Nebraska. And then we got one safety. It is Will Hill, who also played at Florida. He's looking at 
Army, Georgia, Ohio State, Penn State, Syracuse. So really good recruiting class. Like I said, it's definitely more offensive heavy for sure there's only like seven, seven players on defense but uh yeah it'd be very interesting to see where all these guys end up so once again guys last year ucla won the national championship they are just on an insane run here like nine appearances in like 13 years or whatever it is i mean they did lose matt liner so they don't have rogers or liner anymore it'll be very interesting to see where they land First, we're going to look at our preseason polls here. So Ohio State's coming in at the number one team in the country. They did lose Vince Young. They lost Mario Williams. Lamar Woodley lost a ton of talent. Still look pretty good. Nebraska coming in really good offense. They did lose Reggie Bush, but they look really good. UCLA, third in the country. They're in A. They look good. Georgia's in A. Looks good. AM looks pretty good. Minnesota, BYU, Army looks incredibly good. Alabama looks decent. UCF, Texas looks pretty good. LSU, Oklahoma looks decent. Stanford, Florida, a plus across the board so they're actually one of the better teams uh we definitely got to look at army washington looked really good this year they have jamal charles i know we gotta look at washington georgia tech looks really good okay we gotta look at georgia tech too oh penn state we'll have to take a look at penn state they look really good so yeah those are kind of the top teams it looks like right now um heisen watch i don't know if we have oh well, yeah we had tim tebow who had a great freshman year last year uh he's gonna be a four-year starter at florida bar barring injury or whatever peyton hillis was huge for arkansas last year there's a big bowling ball back there Look at our preseason All-Americans. We got Timmy, Tebow, we got Peyton, Hillis, we got Max Unger at UCLA. Uh, honestly, not anybody on defense of our creative guys. Uh, second, uh, Zach Miller at tight end, who was absolutely insane last year. 1,253 yards for Ohio State. Um, Eugene Monroe for Army. Army's got some, some players. Uh, Keith Rivers at Florida. Um, yeah, and that's kind of where we are sitting. Also want to look at our championship contenders here. Nebraska, you know, one, two, or three for the next five years. Ohio State, one, two, seven, one. Like, that's really good. Florida, right around the top five. They actually are taking a bit. They're going, coming down a little bit. Penn State, UW's got, you know, a good two years in them. Probably Army looks. Army's been recruiting great. Oklahoma looks like they're at a bit of a low, but they'll pick it back up in two years. UCLA looks like they're maybe going to start coming down to earth. AM's picking it up. Georgia, eh. Texas looks pretty good. Notre Dame. Yeah, so I don't know. We might, it feels like we might be seeing a bit of a changing of the guard. Is Florida, Florida still has Tebow for the next three years, but they haven't been quite hitting those recruits the same. Um, but yeah, let's look at, okay, Bama. They got oh they got darren mcfadden i didn't even realize they have him kenny phillips have they got a qb oh not really so i don't know yeah i don't know about them then we got army they are really good this year chad henny is a senior rashad mendenhall Va vontae davis they have eugene monroe look at all their 90s beanie wells army legit is a national powerhouse right now they have this nasty they got just got tyrod taylor we might see army go on a run here legitimately so i'm cool with it i mean i don't mind when these smaller teams get good players and then do good i just it's kind of annoying when the small schools have shitty players and then they make the natty and they just get blown out but if you recruit good like army has been and you become a powerhouse hell yeah that's cool to see um keep going down like florida really good still sue rivers uh newbie they got tim tebow they have percy harvin darius hayward bay yeah okay yeah no this team looks really good i mean you just have tim tim tebow for at least the next two years decent junior running back you have for at least two years hayward bay man, yeah like they're fast they have a really good tight end right now i think two really good tight ends and one of the junior so yeah florida could easily get it done this year they have two superstars on defense uh georgia had a really good foursome at the top there i mean they have a really good qb this year they've still jenkins and ayers on defense um their qb's gone though and they do not have anything in behind them so they really need a big time recruit uh their weapons they did get golden tate that's nice for them their weapons aren't great on offense. They're really going to have to win on defense and with their elite QB. Uh, Georgia Tech, I want to look at just because they were ranked really highly. Not really any of our guys, but they look decent. Keep going down. LSU. Uh, boy, not crazy. 
Miami's really just they had a, a portion there in like the 90s where they were really good but not lately Michigan yeah they've just never really got it together Minnesota they had a good run there they haven't been getting those QBs I think they're we've seen the last of them for a while but it was cool to see them have a nice run Nebraska one of the better teams in the country still they got this Neil like we might not really see Stafford start except one year which would be kind of unfortunate I mean, this Neil's really good. 94 overall with 91 speed. Like Stafford, I hope they redshirt Stafford this year. They got LaShawn McCoy. They got Deshaun Jackson. They have a ton of, you know, talent on offense. Big time center, DN, guards. Yeah, like this team's really good. They got Richard Sherman, Trent Williams, Taylor Mays. Yeah, Nebraska has a ton of talent. I, I don't think they've won a natty yet. So I don't think, right? They win. I don't, no, I don't think they have. So it'd be cool to see them get get one. Notre Dame. They were so good in the '80s, and they're just not really up to it anymore. Um, this is a bit of a a weird. So they did get Russell Wilson. So that's huge. I mean, he's not going to really start though. For you'll only start for two years. This Joe Moore is going to be the starter. Then they'll go to Russell. So they're fine there. They got AP this year, and then they got some juniors. Um, wide receiver. They still haven't got no, that big time recruit. They do have this like just crew of three sophomore or like freshmen all came up together. Uh, they still they need a kind of big time wide receiver recruit. They still have Zach Miller. They've yeah they have a really good tight end room. Ohio State definitely not as good as last year, um, but still really good. Still getting a ton of big time recruits. It just feels like it's a bit of a a bump bump here same with oklahoma i don't think they're quite as good they got glenn dorsey gerald mccoy they do have sam bradford but they don't throw the ball like he passed for 140 yards a game last year they have a lot of talent but it does feel like they they had a really good recruiting class last year i think they're kind of on that slope down maybe not for like good but just a down down year maybe a little bit uh, I, I like Penn State. Yeah, I forgot. They got Jake Locker. They got Dwayne Jarrett. Ain't Myron Roll. I feel like they just got a... Oh, they just got Rob Gronkowski. So, uh, yeah, Penn State. Uh, they, we could see them doing some stuff from here on out. Uh, Syracuse, Stanford. Tennessee is Darrell Revis and literally basically nothing else. Texas has got McCoy and Manningham. I mean, just on those two, you got a good tight end, some good other positions. Yeah, Texas could do something this year. A&M, early set. Um, they do have a decent quarterback, Sergio Kindle. They don't really have a QB. I mean, this sophomore will be okay by next year, but don't really have that big time QB right now. I mean, they could get uh, RG3 or something next year, though, for sure. Uh, UCLA, Unger, Donald, Stewart, Walker, like they have Thurmond. Uh, yeah, I mean, CJ Spiller, they have just a state. I mean, this Bo Morris, 92 junior. Yeah, that's all you need with this team, with this stable of threesome of running backs and their triple option offense. Yeah, we could see UCLA make their freaking 10th natty right here, which would be absolutely nuts. The other team I want to make sure I looked at was Washington. Yeah, they got Jamal Charles and a 94 QB with a 9. Okay, so they're loaded on offense. Nasty run. All juniors, too. So hopefully they're all back next year and they just have a three-headed monster. Williamson, Charles, and Robinson. Okay, I like it, UW. So that is our rosters, guys. That is where we're sitting. We are going to sim to week number nine, and then we'll see where we're at. All right, guys. So week nine, here we are. So Nebraska, Florida, Georgia, UCF, Memphis, all undefeated. Stanford, Oklahoma, UCLA, you know, one, two losses. Oh, that might be it for UCLA. Two losses. That's going to be tough. Army only has one loss. Um, they don't play really anybody, so they have a good shot of making it. LSU, Auburn, they need people to lose. Obviously, Navy's 8 no. Oh, so Army and Navy, but they, yeah, they actually play a tougher schedule. AM, Wisconsin, okay. So looking at the undefeateds, yeah, they still have to play Minnesota. Ohio State definitely took a step back this year. Florida, who do they still play? Georgia, that's their big, big game. Georgia, Florida in a few weeks ucf i played memphis who's also undefeated who's still as ucf and usf who's also undefeated so we have three of those teams all undefeated hopefully they all just kind of give each other loss losses oklahoma has only has one loss but they play ucla this week basically the winner 
I mean, UCLA would still, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. We'll probably just sim to conference championship weekend. Heisman watch. Um, Chris Riley, QB at Navy. He's an 82 overall, and he's leading the Heisman. Neil for Stan, or, yeah, Nebraska. Walker, who won it last year for UCLA. Hunt, who's a freshman for Nebraska. I don't know how he's playing over LaShawn McCoy. Let's look at some season stats. Dennis Dixon leading the country and passing for Stanford. Mark Sanchez at Oregon State in fifth. Um, that's rushing, receiving, um, tackles. James, Lar James Laronitis in second. Sacks, interceptions. Then we go to team stats. Nebraska Army, Stanford, Florida, Duke, uh, number one offenses. Defense is UCF, Memphis, Florida. So Florida's third on defense, like second or third on offense. So Florida looks like they could be pretty good this year. They got to beat Georgia, though. Let's look at the recruiting really quick. Um, well, this will be the only time we look at it till National Signing Day. So QB, Terrell Pryor, looking like he might go to Army. Army is building a squad, guys. Andrew Luck go to Texas. I kind of hope he goes to Texas. I'd, I'd like to see Texas be back. Uh, Manuel, that'd be huge for Georgia. RG3 going to Tech. Okay, I hope they don't both go to Texas. One of you go to AM, one of you go to Texas or KU, whatever. But, uh, and then Tennessee, maybe Nebraska, but he's not really getting recruited right now. Mark Ingram, Akron or Purdue? So small schools for him. Michael James, Arkansas, AM or LSU. Michael Floyd, not really getting recruited, but maybe Florida. Julio looking like Bama or Florida. He could play with Tim Tebow and Percy Harvin. I kind of hope he goes to Florida. I like Florida in this sim just because they keep putting together really cool teams. Uh, Justin Blackman, AM Baylor, but he locked in at AM. Kendall Wright, go to Texas. I'm okay. This is what I hope. I hope Andrew Luck and Kendall Wright go to Texas. I hope Justin Blackman and RG3 go to AM. And you just have those kind of four, you know, meet in the middle, fight for Texas, uh, even though they don't play in the same conference, but whatever. Uh, Marvin Jones, SC and UCLA. So staying home in Cali. Uh, the two big tight ends. So Trav, looking like he's going to go to Ohio, or I kind of hope he goes to Ohio State. Um, and then Kyle Rudolph, looking like Ohio State or Baylor, BYU, and they got the, I think it have an insane group of tight ends there. Barrett Jones, looking like Georgia, Bama, Memphis. Uh, Matt Khalil, looking like UCLA, Cal, UCLA. That'd be a good fit for him. Tyron, already locked in at the Ohio State. DN, Courtney Upshaw, looking like Bama or Georgia. Daquan Bowers already locked in at Georgia. The tackle, Marcel Darius looking like Georgia or Alabama. Two horse race there. Corner, Patrick Peterson, AM, Bama or uh, Florida. Jenkins already locked in at Oklahoma. And last but not least, we got Will Hill looking like Army, Ohio State, or Marshall. So there's some interesting players, guys. That's going to set us up for the future. So obviously, that always is super important. Okay, we are going to sim to conference championship weekend now. Okay, so conference championship weekend. Northern Illinois is 12 and 0. UCLA is up to number two. And they got Stanford. This is a weird group. Memphis, Florida, LSU, Nebraska, one loss. Why, why is Memphis ahead of these teams? Okay, I don't know. Okay, so UCLA, Stanford. Then Stanford is Dennis Dixon. That's actually kind of a cool team. Florida, LSU, Nebraska, Penn State. Those are some big games. Okay, so first big one, we got Northern Illinois versus Ohio. Like, if Northern Illinois wins, they are basically in the dance. So, this is a big one. Let's see. And Ohio wins in overtime. Wow, so that really opens the door for some other teams. We got Florida LSU. Florida has one loss somehow. They're seventh. Um, Boston College, Stanford, UCLA. The winner of that's probably in. I'm a little worried because there's the Memphis team with um, one loss, but they don't play in a conference championship game. Uh, first, we're going to sim through this Nebraska-Penn State. This is a big game. Let's see what happens here. Nebraska wins. So they're one loss, 12 and one team. We're going to sim through this because I want to watch the Florida game. I want to watch Kim Tebow. We're going to sim through this. If UCLA wins this, I just don't even know, man. If they make another one. Oh my God. Stanford put the boots to them. So Stanford might make the natty with Dennis Dixon. I, and it's either going to be them playing. If LSU wins, it'll be, or sorry, if Florida wins, it'll be their Florida, Nebraska, or Memphis, most likely. Okay, we're, uh, yeah, I want to see some, uh, I want to see Timmy D, but let's be honest. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Florida, 
Number three offense, LSU number four. Uh, but Florida has a much, much better defense. Here's Florida's top three. Here is LSU's. And UCLA lose to Stanford, so they are not in. Like, Stanford looks like Dennis Dixon on Oh, We definitely got to look at Stanford's roster before that, uh, Natty, if they do end up making it. Okay, let's sim through this first quarter here. And LSU takes a 10-0 lead here. Florida driving. Here we got third and nine. I just, I want to see. I don't really care about LSU's offense. They, like, literally have none of our, no of our players. But, I mean, Florida's literally got Percy Harwin, Harvin, DHB, and uh, Tim Tebow. So, oh, they're going to run draw on third and nine, though. That is not... I might have to change. I don't know if I like Tebow on 17. But, uh, yeah, don't like that play. Oh, my gosh. They're going for it here. They must not like their uh, field goal kicker. They're going empty here with Timmy T in shotgun. Drops back the lefties, fires it in the flats. You need a block. Oh, that's a huge. He's just short. That's actually a crazy stiff arm, but he is short of the first down there. Okay, let's go. Let's go through the quarter now. Oh my God. 17 nothing LSU. And Florida's punting here. LSU. Oh, fumble recovered. And then. Oh my. This is crazy. Florida. Third and six, fourth and three. They go for it and pick it up. Third and fourth here for LSU. Even if you go up 20, nothing. Like, I don't know if Florida can come back from this. This would be huge. There's like Florida has a definite chance of making the national championship if they win this. But oh my gosh, there's a huge sack there. That's actually going to make it a tough field goal. I don't know how good LSU's kicker is, but these college kickers can be very hit or miss. They kick a field goal and miss it yeah it's 49 yards but i mean florida can get nothing consistent going on offense trips to the bottom of the screen here tebow shotgun drops back slides pressure and he goes down and fumbles oh that might be it for florida wow that is not what you want if you're a gators fan fourth and six they do kick that field goal if you're florida you need to score here Third and four. Intercepted. They miss another field goal, though. Hits Percy for 20. Hits Hayward Bay for 21. Hits Hayward Bay for 25. Holy crap. So if LSU misses another field goal, all of a sudden, Florida just hits hu three huge plays down the field. They're bringing pressure to you, but you got to get that out. Throws it away. He's got two picks on the day. Has not been great in this one, but... You score a touchdown here. I mean, 20 to 7, that is a doable game. You have a great offense. You real, I feel like you really need seven here. You got Percy and DHB to the top. They're gonna do a little speed option with Percy or DHB. Pitch it out. That was Percy, a little speed option with Percy Harvin and Tebow. They have 20 seconds left, though. They do have a timeout. Third and one. Tebow pressure. Back corner. I would probably go for this, but I mean, 11 seconds. I'm sure they're going to kick their field goal. Field goal's good. At least you're not getting shut out if you're Florida. Second and five, third and one. Pick it up. First and 10, second and 13, third and eight here. Florida needs a touchdown. Like, they've got to crawl back in this one. Tebow and shotgun here. Man, how cool is this? The way where we started. Tebow drops back, fires it over the middle. And we started with John Elway and Dan Marino. And guys, we're already up to work. Tebow and Percy Harvin. We just saw Vince Young at Ohio State. Like the amount of ground we've covered is just insane. We still have a, like eight, 15 more years to go or something. So yeah, this is wild. Third and two, fourth and four. And they're going to kick a field goal again. Field goal is good. I mean, it's going to be tough to come back if you're kicking field goals. They do get a stop at the LSU offense. So second and 13, third and eight. They pick it up. Minus three. Oh, my God. First and goal. They hit Cooley for 31. And they score finally. DHB announced a seven-point game. And LSU just punts a touchdown. Tim Tebow, they just tied it. They blocked a punt. I don't even know what happened there. And now it's third and nine. All of a sudden, it's tied. I don't know what happened. I think it was either a fumble or a pick or a block punt. I don't know. And then Tebow scored from like two yards out. Third and nine here for LSU. How the tides have turned. LSU QB drops back. Oh, that could have been picked off. But I actually almost caught off the bounce as well. 
all the momentum is now with Florida. They've scored 20 straight. They have the ball in Tebow. George, throw away, third and four. Fumble recovered by LSU. Hit it for 22 for seven, minus two, fourth and six. They're going to try a long field goal. I actually didn't really mean to watch this, but long field goal. Uh, they're two for four. This is a long kick. And it's good. He nailed that one. 23 to 20 now. LSU. Okay, what do you got? Florida George. Third and four. Fourth and one. They punt. Oh my goodness. Now LSU punts though. Third and one. First and ten. Second and five. First and ten. Second and nine. Third and inches. First and goal from the seven. Let's watch from here. 426 left. This is go time. Five attempts. You've had one touchdown if you're Florida. That's been the difference in the game is you are not. I mean, LSU's not really converting in the red zone either, but uh Ooh, ooh, I like that. A little fake rollout. Tebow spots up. And now, barring the extra point, it is going to be a four-point game. Pressure on LSU. They got it rocking right here, though. Second and ten. Third and five. They pick it up. Second and eight. Third and three. This is... I mean, it's got to be four-down territory, honestly, if you're LSU. Um, 230 left. A field goal doesn't really do much for you. QB drops back. A little tunnel screen. He's got it. He's got that easily. First and goal. Each team has three timeouts. First and goal from the eight. We're going to sim a play. And that's a touchdown. Very next play. So Tebow's got two minutes, three timeouts to go win this one. Third and 11, fourth and five. Oh my goodness. This is basically the game. You do have three timeouts, but if you stop him here, no, they'd run draw. Oh my God, this game. Who would run draw on third and five? Fourth and five. Oh my. Okay. Well, yeah, you lost that right there. Fourth and five. They, okay. They did actually kick a field. You got a minute to score a touchdown and you have no timeouts. So they just hit Percy for 34. Oh my God. They got 30 seconds from the three yard line. Tebow, empty, 31 seconds. Snap the ball, snap the ball, throw it. Touchdown. Oh my gosh. I should have watched a little more of that. He hits Justin Tucker in the back corner. Oh my gosh. How did that even happen? It, it, brothers hit Percy and then Cooley, 34 and then 25 yards. They hit the extra point. LSU's got 20 seconds. 11 seconds here. Oh my goodness. Two comebacks down 20 and then late with a minute left down six and Tebow gets it done. Barring something crazy here. They're going to throw it out to the flats. LSU does have three timeouts. They do only need a field goal about seven seconds. If you had 30 seconds left. Yeah, you got a good shot. They hit him for 22. Oh my gosh. There's three seconds left. but They basically need a Hail Mary. I actually lost an SEC championship game. Uh, when I was controlling my Alabama squad, just watching, but they threw to Hail Mary. Okay, no, that is it. He goes down and a furious comeback by Florida. Nadama Kansu ends it with a sack. They still have a shot at making the natty. Four total touchdowns for uh, Tim Tebow for the Gators. Knocks off LSU, and it's going to be either Florida, Nebraska, or possibly Memphis in the national championship game. Playing probably the Stanford Cardinal. I mean, it technically could be Nebraska, Florida. I mean, maybe they'll keep, keep out Stanford. I just think Stanford was the number one two team in the country, and they just beat uh, UCLA, who is number three. So I, I feel like Stanford's going to be in, but who knows? Let's see. So Andy Hunt, freshman running back, wins the Heisman at Nebraska. I, I guess LaShawn got hurt. I don't know. Stanford, Memphis. Oh, I did not want Memphis. 11 and 1 versus 12 and 1. I just didn't think it'd be Memphis because they didn't have a, a conference championship game. So they won. They don't even have as many wins. They're obviously in a way worse conference. So I'm not super excited for this game. Uh, Stanford does have uh, Dennis Dixon. They got Ray Maluga. Uh, he's got a nice receiver with him who had 1,000 yards three years in a row. I mean, Stanford at least has, you know, I mean, Dennis Dixon's cool, you know. For sure. 3,700 yards, 36 touchdowns, two picks. Ran the ball a bit too. As far as Memphis, I, I mean, maybe they're sick. I, I, I really doubt it. Yeah, no, this is not a good team. Should never have got in over Nebraska or Florida, but uh, that is where we are. So, not the most hyped natty. It could have been, it literally easily could have been Florida versus Nebraska, which would have been cool. 
really cool but here it is we got memphis stanford i'm honestly gonna sim through this one pretty freaking quick this is where we sit stanford does have the number one offense in the country memphis has the number one defense so that's kind of where we're at ray maluga it's their top three no injuries and we're playing in the rain i've actually noticed the rain like i don't know if it's coded in this old of a game where the rain actually affects it i've noticed that they play shitty in the rain like draw passes so i'm sure it does affect it and yeah i'm simming through this we'll watch a little bit in the fourth quarter if it's close like i do not care about this game like i said i don't care if teams get good like if this was army army had a ton of cool players i would be fine if army was in here right now i mean dennis dixon kind of cool ray maluga but for the most part these teams just do not do it for me let's go keep going i mean memphis i think memphis actually won a natty earlier did they yeah, they won in 1996. This would somehow be Memphis's second national championship, but they are down 20 to 7 right now. But that's crazy that they've even made two. Yeah, Dennis Dixon. Okay, we'll go fourth quarter. Uh, okay, 20 to 14, 27, 7, 14. Oh, okay, let's see here. Fourth and six. Okay, they stopped them. First and ten. Okay, let's maybe watch a little bit of Stanford here. Third and nine. Let's see what Dennis Dixon can do. Trips to the top. Gonna do a little screen if he gets it out. Oh, he might actually have a wall. Oh my gosh, he had a caravan of blockers. He might be gone. He beat him to the. Oh my gosh, 434 pass yards for Dennis Dixon. Their running back has 93 yards receiving. Hit a touchdown next play. So Dennis Dixon, I mean, he didn't have to play the toughest team, but he deserved. He showed up in this game. He might have over 500 freaking yards passing in this one. Third and five. We'll just watch one more play here. 434, three touchdowns. Dennis freaking Dixon and the Stanford Cardinal win it. I mean, they played a horrible team. This team should not have been here, but uh, hey, it is what it is. If they would have beat Florida or Nebraska, then... I feel kind of bad for Nebraska. If you're a Nebraska fan, I know I have a lot of Nebraska fans who watch the channel. Dennis Dixon drops it out there. It's dropped though. Um, yeah, they, in fact, they, they've recruited so well. They have not won a national championship yet, which is just shocking. Um, just going to go to the end of game here. 37-14. That is it. Uh, Stanford is going to win this one. They beat Memphis. Just looking at Dixon, 485, four touchdowns, and he had 29 on the yard. So he had over 500 yards of offense this game. Wins a national championship in his senior season. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so final top 25. Obviously, it's going to be Stanford, then Nebraska. Who had, so Florida ended up losing their game. Nebraska finishes 13-1, and one, just misses out. They beat Penn State and Navy to end the year. That Nebraska team might be pissed if I was a Nebraska fan, not going to lie. Hi, they did win a Heisman. I feel like they've won a ton of Heismans. Freshman running back wins it. Uh, 2,200 yards as a freshman. And their QB got freaking third. 2,400, 2,500 yards. He ran for... Oh, my gosh. They were just running the ball over everyone. Pat White. I forgot about Pat White. Nice year this year for UCF. Uh, over a... Th oh, my gosh. Look at his rushing yards. 4,000... Over 4,000 rushing yards in four years for the Bulls. Okay, let's look. So, Dennis Dixon led the country in passing. Mark Sanchez in fourth. Uh, there's receiving. Tackles. James Laronitis. Sacks. And interceptions. So, if we look at team stats. Best offense. Stanford, Nebraska, Texas. How many yards... So UCLA, Nebraska, they just run the ball like it's nobody's business. Texas had a good year. Defense, Army, Memphis, UCF, Florida was up there, Ohio. Okay, now we're going to look at some of these players. So Chris Leak at Duke, uh, 3,400 yards. He had a nice senior year. Uh, eight for yeah, a really good year for Duke. Dennis Dixon, we already looked at. We'll look at his final. 4,200 yards. He should have won the Heisman. 390 yeah he should have won the heisman i think bernard dunn or no that's not who i was thinking of but, but this guy 40 whoa he was good for wisconsin pat white we already looked at chad henney he's gonna be done, done at army but he had a nice career mark sanchez still another year and he had a great year for oregon state tim tebow is a sophomore actually threw for less yards 599 rushing so yeah he didn't actually have quite as good of a year running back ap 
Back-to-back 1,100-yard seasons. Peyton Hillis, only 1,000 yards. Definitely a lot worse this year. Darren McFadden, 1,100 yards as a junior. Jay Stu, 1,400 yards as a sophomore. Jamal Charles, 997. Rashard Mendenhall for Army, over 1,000, 1,100. Steve Slayton, he's at Marshall, 1,100. Wideouts, early Doucette at A&M, 1,100 yards. Ted Ginn Jr., uh, 1,100 yards. A lot of 1,100 yards here, 1,199 there. Deshaun Jackson, 434. Uh, Mario Manningham, 1,100. Darius Hayward Bay, 1,100. Okay, now we are going to sim to the offseason and look at National Signing Day. Okay, so this is going to be big. Terrell Pryor going to Army. Okay. Andrew Luck goes to Texas. Okay, RG3, don't go to Texas. EJ Manuel, Georgia. RG3, Minnesota. So they get another QB. Sure, he didn't go to Texas, so I'm happy. I just didn't want them both. And then Blaine Gabbert ends up at Ohio State. That's big for Ohio State. Nice QB. Uh, Mark Ingram goes to Purdue. LaMichael James goes to Arkansas. Wide receiver Michael Floyd goes to Bama. Julio ends up at Florida. They're going to have Percy Harvin, Tim Tebow, and Julio Jones. Justin Blackman, AM. Kendall Wright does go to Texas. Marvin Jones ends up. I don't know if that means he just didn't sign anywhere. I don't know. Maybe he didn't, which would be stupid. Travis Kelsey ends up at West Virginia. Kyle Rudolph ends up at Western Kentucky. So our, our tight ends go to small schools. Barrett Jones ends up at Memphis, UCLA for Khalil, Tyron Smith at Ohio State. The end, Upshaw, Bama, Daquan Bowers, Georgia. Marcel Darius, Georgia. No linebackers. Corner, Patrick Peterson ends up at LSU. Big pickup, George, Janoris Jenkins. I think they're going to, yeah, they're going to have Joe Hayden and Janoris Jenkins. And then Will Hill, Georgia got some good defenders. Um, especially considering this was not like a great defensive class. So UCLA number one school or recruiting class. Army's been like top five a ton. Texas, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Georgia, Florida, Stanford, Mississippi State, a and are our top five. Okay, now we're just going to go look at coaches and then I've got to make the next recruiting class. Okay, so coaches. So Barry Alvarez, now the head coach at Michigan State. Okay, maybe he'll pull them... Bobby Bowden got, I think this is his third time at Florida State. Do something. Do good there. I'd love it. Mac Brown, Iowa State. Pete Carroll, ULM. Harbaugh, head coach at Mississippi State. Woody Hayes, safe at Florida. Lou Holt, safe. I, oh, he's at DC at Maryland. Virginia hires Don James. Jimmy Johnson, safe for now at Boise. Chip Kelly, OC at Memphis. Urban, safe. Uh, Robert Neeland, head coach at Mizzou now. Ed Orgeron at Nevada. Tom Osborne, safe. Joe Paw is now the head coach at Miami. Okay. I don't hate that. I'd like one of our coaches to save Miami. That'd be cool. Gary Patterson, Oklahoma State. Saban, safe at Wisconsin. Shem Beckler's doing pretty good at Penn State. Uh, Schnellenberger, safe for now. Kirby, safe for now. Spurrier, Dabo, safe at Bama. Barry Switzer, safe at Oklahoma. Kyle Whittingham, safe for now at Utah. Okay, I want to just quickly look at Heisman's. I usually, um, I feel like Nebraska's won an insane amount of Heisman's. UCLA's won five, four, four. Okay, Nebraska's only won three. So UCLA, five. That's crazy. Okay, I'm going to make the 09 recruiting class and then we're going to get into that. All right, guys, 09 season. Let's get into it. Now, this is a good recruiting class once again. Uh, this one's a little bit more defensive heavy than the last. This one's pretty balanced. There's not great QBs. We only have two of them. That's probably the weakest point. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a good class overall. So getting into QBs, like I said, we only got two. First, A.J. McCarron. Now, obviously, he played at Alabama, played with the Bengals in the NFL. I believe they, he was one of the QBs when they won a national championship in the early 2000s or 2010s you know, as well, A.J. So be interesting to see where he goes. He's looking at Bama, Florida, Auburn right now. Then the other one is Derek Carr. Now, his brother, David, went to UCLA in the sim, but he's looking like Texas, Hawaii, uh, Florida, Colorado. I'm kind of hoping he doesn't go to Texas because they just got Andrew Luck, right? Like, it's been like a day since I recorded one of these. Okay, then if we go to running back, we got two, both Alabama guys. Uh, first, Eddie Lacy from Louisiana, played at Bama. He's looking at Oklahoma, Florida, Texas, Nebraska. The other one is Trent Richardson, who is unbelievable at Alabama. 
uh, was a top three pick by the Browns in the NFL draft. He's looking at Florida, Florida State, Georgia, Alabama, Clemson. Moving on to wide receivers, we have a couple of really interesting receivers. First, Josh Gordon played at Baylor with RG3. You know, Cleveland Browns had like one really incredible season, had some like issues other than that, but really talented, 6'3", 215 range. He's looking at Oklahoma, Texas, Stanford. I kind of hope Texas, go play him. I think Luck, right? It was Luck went to Texas, um, but yeah, having him and Luck play together would be really cool. Then we got Alshon Jeffrey. Um, played at South Carolina. He's looking at Florida, Ohio State, Texas, Minnesota, Alabama. Moving on to tight ends. And we have none. Moving on offensive tackles. We got Taylor Luan. Um, played for Michigan. You know, Tennessee Titans in the NFL has a podcast on Barstool right now. He's looking at Arizona State, UCLA, Stanford, Cal. We got DJ Fluker who played at Alabama. Big, powerful offensive lineman, 345 pounds. He's from Alabama, but you might go out west. Looking at UCLA, Stanford, Texas. Texas is all of a sudden making some noise with some of these recruits. Moving into guard, and we got two. First, uh, Gabe Jackson. Now, he played at uh, Mississippi. Really good offensive lineman in the NFL and in college. Uh, he played at Mississippi State, I believe. He's looking at Oklahoma, UCLA, Florida, Nebraska. We got Chance Warmack, another guy who's he's from Georgia, but he played at Bama. He's looking at Georgia Tech, Georgia, Florida, Bama. Then we got Zach Martin, like an NFL Hall of Fame level type player. He's played at Notre Dame, Played got drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. He's looking at UCLA, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Auburn, uh, Arizona. We have no centers. This is a really good offensive line group. Uh, move on to defensive ends, and we only got one. It is Olivier Vernon. Now, he played at the U. He's from the state of Florida. He's looking at Florida, Florida State, Miami. Uh, if we go D tackles, we got two really good ones. First, Sheldon Richardson. Now, he's from Missouri. He played at Mizzou, but he's looking at Oklahoma, Nebraska, Ohio State, Michigan. We got Fletcher Cox. Played on the Eagles Super Bowl team. Uh, still with the Eagles right now. Believe he was at Mississippi State as well. He's looking at Oklahoma, Texas, AM, Florida, Nebraska. As far as outside linebackers, we just have one Jarvis Jones. He's kind of a 3 4 pass rushing type outside linebacker. He played at Georgia. He's from the state. He's looking at Oklahoma, UCLA, SC. Florida, Nebraska. If we go to middles, we got a pair of nasty ones. For, we do have three, but the top two are... Oh, I think we're actually missing a defensive end. Khalil Mack is also here. He's from Florida. He played at Buffalo, obviously drafted by, you know, Raiders, played with the Bears, with the Chargers now, one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. He's looking at Florida, Georgia, Georgia Tech, LSU. Now getting to our middle linebackers, and we got two, we got three, but two studs. First, Luke Keekley played at Boston College, top 10, 15 pick by Carolina line in the NFL draft, like borderline NFL Hall of Famer, absolute freak in the middle, 6-3, looking at Ohio State, Oklahoma, Bama, Notre Dame. We got Bobby Wagner. Now, he played at Utah State, second round pick by the Seattle Seahawks, who's on those LOB teams, one of the best linebackers of all time. From Cali, he's looking at UCLA, Stanford, USC, Cal, definitely looks like he's going to stay on the West Coast. Then last but not least, we got Manti Teo. Now, he played at Notre Dame, was like a Heisman Trophy final as a middle linebacker, huge, 250, 255 pounds. He's looking at Hawaii, Fresno State, Stanford. Move on to corners, and we got three of them. We have no safety, so this is the last three. First, we got Stephon Gilmore, played at South Carolina, uh, actually won at NFL Defensive Player of the Year with the Patriots, played with the Bills, plays with the Cowboys now. He's looking at Florida, UCLA, USC, Texas. We got Mo Claiborne, who played at LSU. Uh, was like a top 10 pick by the Cowboys out of LSU. He was kind of a bust in the NFL, but it was really good in college. He's looking at Raging Cajuns, Tulane, Louisiana Tech. So he's looking at kind of some smaller schools. And then the last one is Dre Kirkpatrick, big kind of press corner. He played at Alabama. He's looking at Florida, Nebraska, Ohio State, UCF, LSU. So that is our group, guys. Pretty good class, like Hall, NFL Hall of Famers, Pro Bowlers, you know, all Americans in college. So ton of really good players. Okay, now we're going to look at the preseason polls here. So first we got Nebraska A plus, including special teams. So this could be, this feels like Nebraska's could be their year. Stanford defending national champions. They're only a B plus though. Florida A plus across the board. They got Tim Tebow in his junior year. Texas looks okay. UCLA really good again. Army really good again. Penn State is starting to really hit kind of the zenith of their talent. Virginia is somehow a C plus, like, up here, but they're 
C plus. We'll have to look at their raw. They have been getting some maybe recruits. I don't know. Uh, Oklahoma looks good. Purdue, LSU, A and M looks pretty good. Ohio State gonna be right there again. Obviously near the end. Georgia A across the board. A minus for Notre Dame. A uh, bunch of B pluses. A minus Cal. Um, okay, so that's kind of where we're sitting. Heisman watch. Got Jacob Taylor at Kansas. This Andy Hunt, who I think won it last year. Mario Neal, who had a really good year for Nebraska last year. He's going to be their starter. They're all auto-generated, guys. Preseason All-Americans. We got Mark Sanchez for Oregon State. Preseason All-American. Andy Hunt. I don't even think this Hunt guy is going to be a starter. They got LaShawn McCoy. Um, not a lot on the O-line. Eugene Monroe and Michael Orr. Myron Roll um, for safety for Penn State. CJ Spiller is a returner. Neal at quarterback. Jonathan Stewart. Uh, Dwayne Jarrett. Trent uh, Trent Williams for Nebraska. Ndamukong Sue along with Marvin Austin. Sue, this is like his fourth year. And he's, yeah, he's been an absolute just freak show in the middle for Florida. Um, Cam Chancellor for Virginia Tech. There we go. So that's kind of where we're sitting there. I want to look at my ch the championship contenders as well here. Right now, Nebraska, it looks like the this next two years, these are their years, and then they go down a little bit. Army, basically just a top five team in the country now. So you just can't really say anything about it. Oklahoma, you know, right around top 10, top five every year. Texas A&M, back around like a top 10 school. Texas looks like top five for the foreseeable future. Florida looks like they're taking a bit of a dip. Same with Ohio State a little bit, but then they kind of pick it back up. Florida, I feel like this, if Florida wants to win one over the next two years, this has got to be the year. They have T Tebow for the next two years, and I don't know. I don't know. They haven't been recruiting quite, quite as good. Okay, let's look at some of these squads. So Bama, McFadden, they have a couple of superstars at the top, but uh, not really super deep all the way down. Not like a superstar QB or anything either. Um, I want to look at Army. Army's just Rashard Mendenhall, Beanie Wells, sick tight end, tackle, Vontae. Like, look how good this team is. They got Tyrod Taylor. They just got Terrell Pryor, but Pryor's not even gonna Pryor's only gonna play for one year because they're gonna have freaking Tyrod Taylor starting. Like this army team, if they don't win a natty, like I'll be shocked in the next few years. They're that talented. Go to Florida. I mean, they are really good this year. Nasty D end, Tim Tebow, Nadama Kansu. This nut look at their D-line. They have three 99s or 98s on their D-line. They got Hayward Bay and Percy Harvin, a middle linebacker, running back, another QB. Like, this is their year, I think. Timmy Tebow. No, I don't have a tight end, but nasty group of receivers. They just got Julio Jones as well. I forgot about that. Like, look at their receiving core this year with Tebow. Um, nothing at corner. And their D line is insane. 99, 99, 98. Like, Florida is nasty this year. We got to see Nebraska because they're A plus across the board as well. But that team is good. Florida, Georgia, maybe taking a bit of a step back here. They're not quite getting. They just got EJ Manuel, who will be their starter for probably three years. They look all right right now. Go down. LSU, nothing crazy. Uh, Miami, really just not doing anything right now. Michigan, not really doing anything. They got Ray Rice. Minnesota, who did they just get? I feel like they just... Oh, they got RG3. Yeah, and RG3 is going to start for them. So Minnesota, I oh, got to keep our eye on them. Mississippi State, no. Nebraska. So this is the other team, you know, bunch of 99s and 98s on their top of their roster. I think Florida looks a little better on paper to me. Uh, like Stafford is literally going to play one season for them. And then they have basically nobody after next year. So they really need a, a recruit. Um, they got LaShawn McCoy. He must have got injured last year. Yeah, he barely's played because this guy started and won the Heisman. But I, I, this is going to be shady show. This guy will still get some run because they run like a triple option. They got Deshaun Jackson, but they just don't really throw. D-line, like definitely D-line's not going to be as good as uh, like they're good. I don't know if their defense. Nice linebacking core, maybe like their outsides are good. Corners, they have way better corners with Sherman. Yeah, they have way better. Oh, they're secondary, actually, because they have Taylor Mays. They have an unreal secondary. Their offense and secondary is where they're going to make their living. Notre Dame, they look fine. Nothing crazy. Ohio State, definitely taking a bit of a step back this year. They lost a ton of talent last year. 
running back uh wide receiver they're decent but yeah they don't have that top top tier talent like they have had the last few years they're they're still going to be in the hunt but uh wouldn't expect uh, them to finish the job bradford G gerald mccoy that's pretty much who they had leading their charge around this time in real life but now they got brandon graham brandon spikes des bryant kenny Britt. man if these guys threw the ball at all they have sam bradford throwing to freaking des bryant and kenny Britt with a bunch of other good weapons but they don't really throw uh do they have a running back right now they're good junior running back with 99 speed man this offense could be scary at oklahoma penn state they're putting it together right now. Dwayne Jarrett, Jake Locker, Myron Roll really leading the way. They got a good running back as well. Stanford defending national champions. They lost their QB. They do actually have still a pretty good QB, but like I don't think we're going to see them back. Tennessee, they lost Revis. They got nothing going for him. Texas. Now, this Texas team is interesting. Very young. They got Vaughn Miller, only a sophomore, and Andrew Locks. They have two of the best players in the country at premium positions, like super young on offense and defense. Maybe Texas will be back. It'd be cool to see Texas go on a run here. Uh, they have not done anything through the sim. Honestly, Luck has some decent weapons. They just got Kendall Wright too. It'd be cool. Luck throwing to Kendall Wright and Josh Gordon, basically stealing RG3's cast and instead of being at Baylor, be at Texas. AM looks pretty good. Sergio Kendall, Wisniewski, Jermichael Finley. Quarterback position is just okay though. UCLA, I mean, they were really close to making it again last year. They have CJ Spiller along with Jonathan Stewart. They have Walter Thurmond, Carlos Dunlap, lots of talent. Uh, they do have a really good QB this year. And then they got a couple of sophomores that they're just going to kind of be developing and let them battle it out. So really good at QB position for this year, though. So UCLA is going to be right around the mix. USC doing nothing washington they still have jamal charles but they lost their qb i think i want to check i don't know why virginia look at virginia shitty why they are ranked like it was virginia tech at least they have cam chancellor but virginia is somehow ranked eighth in the country we are gonna sim to week nine and then we'll see where we're at all right so here we go week nine let's look at our recruiting here so first aj mccarron looking like georgia most likely then if we go to Derek carr he might go to utah maybe colorado so kind of those smaller west coast schools eddie lacy going to a&m big pickup for a&m richardson georgia bama florida state are his top three that's a big pickup for any of them josh gordon going to texas i like that fit Gordon Wright and Andrew Luck. Okay, Tavon going to SC. We haven't seen a big guy go to SC in forever. Uh, and then Alshon going to Ohio State. They've needed wide receivers for a while, so I really like all those fits, actually. Tackle, Taylor Luan looking like uh, Arizona State, Stanford, Cal. DJ Flu Fluker looking like UCLA, Florida, Stanford. For guards, Gabe Jackson going to Oklahoma. Uh, Chance Warmack, Bama looks like. And then going down to Zach Martin, it looks like Nebraska or Oklahoma. Both those are great fits for him. Okay, moving on to the end. We got two, Olivier Vernon looking like the U or Florida State, maybe Louisville. And the other one was Khalil Mack locked in at Florida. That is a massive pickup for the Gators. D tackle, NIU for Sheldon Richardson. Okay, Fletcher Cock going to Florida. Florida gets it. Khalil Mack and Fletcher Cox in the same recruiting class. That is wild. Jarvis Jones going to uh, Oklahoma. That's a nice pickup. Keekley going to Ohio State. UCLA, Washington for our guy, Bobby Wagner. Manti Teo looking like Hawaii, most likely. Maybe San Jose State. Cornerback. Stephon Gilmore, UCLA, locked in, going across the country. Big pickup. Baylor, it looks like, for Mo um and then the last one was dre kirkpatrick right yeah ucf for dre okay so that is where we are sitting ohio state florida oklahoma all we're doing really good kind of just top level view uh if we look at records right now top 25 florida 7-0 and this this team feels like the best florida team in a long time on paper they did have a close game versus LSU. They have, oh my God, they have not scored less than 42 points this year. They've scored 59. Oh my gosh. Tebow better be leading the Heisman race. We got, I would absolutely freaking love if it was Florida, Nebraska. That would be such a cool game. Honestly, or Army. Army would be good too. Marshall, not you, please. Um, I, I mean, they just have nobody. And that's really the only unbeaten. So, 
Um, does Florida have anything huge? Not really. Where's Ohio State? Oklahoma has two losses. I don't see. Did I notice UCLA also? Okay, UCLA only has one loss, actually. So they're right here. Oh, there's Ohio State. They only have one loss. So all those big boys are still in the mix, honestly. Heisman, I'm guessing Tebow. Yeah, Tebow. Timmy Tebow. This Oh, Mario Neal at Nebraska. So either of these guys could get it done. Tebow, 336. 30, oh, my gosh. And he's ran. ran oh, Tebow's getting almost 400 yards a game. Holy Jake Locker at Penn State as well. Tebow is trying to put something special on, on the table right now. Uh, yeah, he's leading the country in passing. Jake Locker in fourth. Uh, there's our rushing leaders receiving Coley for, I think that may be their tight end. Dwayne Jarrett in fourth. Uh, there is tackle leaders, sack leaders, interception leaders. I'm pretty sure Florida's at like around 50 points per game. 50.4 those three teams right here are absolutely disgusting so i'm cool if all any of those three get in uh pit ohio army army so army has a really good bounce so the same with nebraska of offense defense right now okay i'm gonna sim two conference championship game and then we'll see righty conference championships let's take a look nebraska 12 oh my the three teams i said are undefeated so we're gonna get a really good game unless no matter what here otherwise i mean basically the worst case scenario is nebraska loses florida loses georgia tech wins and ucla loses and then it's probably georgia tech army but uh Army's st stacked this year. So it looks like if Nebraska and Florida win, they'll both be in. I definitely want to watch that Nebraska Penn State game. Nebraska or Penn State's got Dwayne Jarrett. They got Jake Locker right now. So lots of talent there. I want to just kind of sims through. So I want to watch that one. We can sim UCLA just on the outside looking in, but they need to. Oh my God, they scored 62 points. How? How many rushing yards did they have? Yeah, they barely threw the ball. 104. Yeah, they had like th over 300 yards rush rushing between Jonathan. Like Jonathan Stewart, just absolutely tr freight train right now. This is actually a low-key big game. If someone stumbles, Georgia Tech could easily get in. Georgia Tech beats Syracuse. Okay. Uh, now, Florida A&M. If, if Florida loses this game. Oh, my Florida 56 to 7. Holy crap. So if Nebraska, if Nebraska beats Penn State, it's probably going to be Nebraska Penn State. And this was my dream game. This is a sick matchup. This is a good matchup too. But I'm low key cheering for Nebraska just because I want to see Florida Nebraska. That is a sick matchup. Let's go. They are the two best teams on paper coming into the year. So I like when those teams, you know, I want to see the, all our guys in these big games. So wow. Two and three on offense and points. Um, Penn State's very balanced. Uh, Nebraska is definitely much more rush heavy. Nebraska has the much better defense. That seems like the biggest uh, kind of difference between the two. Jake Locke, a really good year. Okay, here we go. This is Nebraska has never won a national championship in this sim. They've been consistently right near the top. They, they've been very close, just haven't got it done. I think they made it one or two times, but they've always just been kind of one loss below the neck, the top, top teams. But they are loaded this year. They got to beat Penn State right here, right now. If not, we'll still get Florida Army. And honestly, Army's really good right now. So I'm cool with it. Okay, we're going to go through the first quarter. Nebraska, 7 nothing lead real quick. Penn State answers with a 7-3. We got first and 10 from the 10-yard line. We'll watch some of this. Nebraska already is 100 yards. Going to go their wishbone offense. They got LaShawn McCoy. They got this really good QB right now. They're going to have Stafford next year, who's going to be a different style. This guy's a good runner. Obviously, Stafford isn't going to run, but he's like unreal passer. I'm going to sim one. LaShawn. Okay, here's third and nine. Let's see what they can do. That's going to be Deshaun Jackson, I believe, at the bottom of your screen. Wide receiver, 88. Get up back. Fires it. That's, what she, that's Deshaun for the nine-yard touchdown reception. Deshaun Jackson. Mario Neal. It was him or Tim Tebow. He just passed the for the school record for passing touchdowns. It was him or Tebow, I think, is going to win the Heisman. So, 
Wow, huge throw there. And Nebraska, 14-3 lead. Let's keep simming here. Penn State driving. No, they're going to punt. Fourth and two. They, I mean, could they get wild? No. Okay, so that's halftime. Fourth and four. Nebraska punts. And Penn State is driving. Third and four here. This would be a crushing loss for Nebraska if, if Penn State's able to take this one. This is their best team. So much talent. Drops back. Jake Locker fires it. That's a completion. This would be. That's Dwayne Jarrett, their superstar all-world. Um, he's got the school record for receptions now. All-world receiver. They have Gronk, Jake Locker. Like this Penn State team, man. Second and eight, third and five. Ooh, this is big. Either go up here by four or you're down one. What a swing. They're going back to empty with Jake Locker here. Then drop back. Fires it wide open over the... That might be a like half... Oh, they gave him a first... It looked like it might have been in his backhand there. I didn't know if they were going to give him the first down. But they do. Penn State. Oh, minus three, three yard rush. Third and goal from the seven now. Okay, we're kind of in that same position we were just in. For Penn State here, either you're down one or you're up four. Like, just such a huge swing. Okay, Locker. Oh, he's getting mad pressure. What a blitz call there by Nebraska. They brought the nickel pressure and eight Locker up. Field goal is good. We got ourselves a ball game. Third and four, fourth and two. They go for it and pick it up and then they score the next play. Oh my. Oh, and then Nebraska just scores a four yard touchdown with Sean. Okay. So now Penn State back out on offense. Second and 10, third and 20. They're going to have to punt that now. Nebraska. Oh, but Nebraska punts. Okay. There's four minutes left, four, almost five minutes, third and four here for Penn State. This is big. The problem is if you punt here, now Nebraska can go and go up two scores if they get a touchdown. So you you obviously can't have that. They're going to run read option with Jake Locker. He breaks a tackle. Now, if you're not familiar with Jake Locker's game, guys, he's basically in college. He was like a poor man's Tebow. Really athletic. Not the best thrower, but crazy athlete. Could break tackles like that. And he picks up a huge one, then just hits for a 34-yard gain and then scores a touchdown the next play. Nebraska down three. National title appearance on the line. Second and 13. Third and two. This is what they're built for. These third, third downs where they can run the ball in their wishbone offense. They got LaShawn McCoy, Deshaun jackson it's mario neal they go into Lashawn. he's not able to get the edge shady gets tackled short he's only got eight right on there going for it this is a, basically the game here fourth and one you do have three timeouts if you're nebraska but you're gonna give them give them the ball on their your side of the 50 here it is Gonna hand it off to their fullback and he's gonna pick it up. Okay, there we go. Are they kind of up back? He's got nine carries for four yards. So Penn State's done a really good job with the run game. LaShawn minus 13. Oh my gosh. Third and 23. They got a loss and then a penalty. If you're Nebraska now, you're you almost have to play for the punt here. Like obviously take a shot. Uh, but you know what? Like a punt. Oh, a pick. I mean, that could be an arm punt if you can make a tackle. It doesn't destroy you. But now, Nebraska, you are in tough. You need a stop and to get the ball back. Penn State can put it on ice right here. Second and four. They pick up a first down. Second and five. Third and one. This is the game. Nebraska has no timeouts. If Penn State gets a first down, this one's over. And Nebraska will not make the national championship. They're going to hand it off. The linebacker meets him in the hole. Or might have been the D end. So they're still going to be, they're only going to have about 40 seconds for Nebraska. So they won't have much time. 50 seconds. Okay. It's incomplete. They hit Deshaun Jackson for 30. Second and 10. Oh my gosh. And they just hit LaShawn McCoy for 27. They have 23 seconds. No timeouts. Just hit huge, two huge, massive plays. 19 seconds. Mario Neal dropping back, going to the end zone. Picked off. Oh no, he tried a one-on-one -on -one shot to Deshaun Jackson and gets picked off. Penn State is gonna win the Big Ten and that, I know I have a lot of Nebraska fans who watch a channel and that is a heartbreaker. You had Mario Neal, who's an incredible quarterback. You had Deshaun Jackson. You had freaking LaShawn McCoy, Richard Sherman, Taylor Mays. 
so much talent. Oh, you had a you were in field goal range too. You did not need a touchdown there. And Penn State wins it, and they now are putting college football on notice. I think Gronk and um, Locker, I think, are back next year. So they could have a really nice squad. Locker, 309, three touchdowns. They have a good, their running back's gone, but yeah, Dwayne Jarrett's gone, but he's really good. And then Gronk is only a sophomore. And if you're in Nebraska, this is an absolute killer. Uh, Luckily for you, LaShawn is back next year. I don't know about Deshaun. Deshaun and you lose the quarterback. Luckily, you still have Neil or uh, Stafford coming in for one year. So you, you're not going to be dying at QB, but losing Deshaun, he's like their big time playmaker on the outside and just not making the national championship this year. Okay, now, it should be Army makes it. Um, we'll see. It, it should be Army, Florida. I'm like 95% sure. The fact we've gone this much time and Nebraska's had this much talent and not won one. Okay, so there it is. Tim Tebow gets it done. 60 touchdowns already. All over 5,300 yards. And he's still got a game. He could get 64 touchdowns this year. Jake Locker gets third. That Neil, Nebraska quarterback, does end up getting second. So T Tebow, if he comes back and has a huge year next year, he could easily win player of the decade. This decade, I haven't had as many standouts. Right now, I'm kind of working off... Um, Philip Buchanan won two Thorpes, had 20 interceptions, including nine as a, so a senior. Philip Rivers won a natty and a Heisman, was a four-year starter at Florida. Vince Young, he had two those two crazy seasons... He maybe had the best season we've ever seen. Won a Heisman, won an Addy. That's kind of what I have. I could be missing someone. Let me know in the comments if you think there's anybody obvious I'm missing, guys. Um, let's see. Yeah, so it is Army and Florida. And honestly, Army is very good. Very good. Florida is not the walk-off, no-doubt winner here at all. Army is going to give these dudes everything they can handle. Beanie Wells, Richard Mendenhall, Tyrod Taylor, a bunch of other, like they're deep as hell. This Florida team is one of the best teams we have seen. Look at them. 48.8 points per game, 551 yards. Holy, and they're seventh best on defense. But Army, fifth on offense and the number one defense in the country. This is a wicked matchup. Absolutely wicked. Uh, I am very excited. They have Monte Davis as well. Pouncey is the only injury for either team. So we are coming in star studded, ready to rock. And this Florida team is loaded. Like I said, and I think they're going for their fourth national championship. I think they have three. Ohio State has five. Yeah, Florida. And this feels like they are getting, they did get Julio Jones. They just got Fletcher Cox and Cleo Mack, but they have Tim Tebow right now. You don't know if he's going to come back next year. So you need to win right here, right now. If you're Florida and Army, you're trying to put your you on the map. You want to know one it was kind of a weird win they didn't have a great team but this would be a no doubt 13 and 0 put it on the board undefeated knock off florida national championship and you have a ton of talent so i'm i'm all i'm all on board if army wins this one i just don't like like slasher when it was stanford memphis like those are games they just don't do it for me i want to see our big time guys okay we're gonna go through the first quarter here Florida 7-0, Army answers right back. Florida 14-7, and they get a stop there. They got second and three, third and one here. Florida can go up 21-7 right here, right now. They're going quads to the bottom, Tebow and shotgun. They're going to hand it off up the middle. They have a big running back who's bowling people over. They've rushed for 88 yards so far on Army. Romero, just absolute bowling ball, one-yard rush, Five-yard touchdown rush by Tim Tebow and Florida 21-7. Army needs an answer. Intercepted. Oh, no. If you're Army, second and goal from the 10. We're going to watch from here because this game could be almost over right now. We have, I, you'll, In these sims, we do see some crazy comebacks. But if Florida goes up 28-7 here, they're going to run speed option. Oh, that's a huge tackle by Army. Now you got them in third and long here. 
Tebow's gonna have to pass, but he does have DHB and Percy Harvin. So if anybody's gonna be able to pass here, it's gonna be Tebow. Heisman Trophy winner, 60 touchdowns coming into this game. And I know he's got at least one already. They're just gonna run draw. So they said, ah, we'll take our three here. We don't wanna turn the ball over. We wanna go up really big here. So Army, you need an answer. Oh, Florida misses the field goal. Okay, if you're if you're army now you're like okay we got we got life they just hit a couple of big plays second eight third and six you need a score here if your army even a field goal get it down to 21 10 feels all right wow that was a big miss army gonna motion a guy down across uh down through the formation tyrod taylor in shotgun here drops back looks like they're setting up a screen oh my i think that was nadama kunsu almost had a pick six Nadama Kong in his final college game. And that's going to have to be a punt there. Florida has the ball. Second and 12. Third and 12, though. This Army defense is playing really well. All things considered, this is the best offense in the country. And defensively, Army is giving them all they can handle here. They're going to run draw again to Romero. I hate that draw. I kind of understood it in the red zone where you're like, eh, we don't want to throw a bad pick, whatever. I hate that draw, though. Okay, Army, you are just letting Army stick around here. Second and five, third, second and three, big pickup, second and eight, okay, third and two. You got to think this is Richard Mendenhall time. He's one of the best backs in the country. They're going to I form. You need Mendenhall to pick up two here. Motion the guy down, I form. They're going to run toss with Mendenhall. They get the edge. He might be in here. Oh my gosh. That safety or linebacker came and filled him in, but that is a first down for Army. Seven yards, and that's a touchdown. We got a 21-14 lead. Tim Tebow, you need to do something here, my guy, if you are wanting to get this done. Fourth and one, and they're going to punt. I can't believe they're punting that. Give them the ball. Second and six, third and 11. Okay, Florida. Your, your offense is, is going through it right now. You defensively need to make a play. And if you're Army, you're thinking, we can go tie this up right here. They're going to go Mendenhall in the flats. A lot of guys there, though. Mendenhall actually loses a yard there. And uh, Florida's going to get the ball back. There we go. And there it is. That probably puts it out of reach. Army needs it now. They need some explosive plays. Second and 12, third and five. They do pick it up here. Second and 20, third and three. 310 i mean it's not over they need a touchdown here a stop and a touchdown uh it's like kind of a doubles look here you know field goal really doesn't do anything for you you need a score and they get a little check down there big big hit but army picks it up and they are keeping this going going to hurry up now 300 yards two picks though is really hurt army two tie rod picks direct in traffic back there 250 left pass rush gonna check that down oh that's a nice tackle and they keep him in bounds 243 left army they're gonna huddle up here five yard rush mendenhall third and one once again oh, now they're down to two minutes they really need to score right away here we're sharp mendenhall this is go time if you're army this is he's one of the best running backs in the country big powerful runner they're gonna run play action they'll get tie run on the move that's gonna be a touchdown army they are alive and cooking right now they are about to be down seven they have three timeouts yeah down seven three timeouts tebow what are you gonna do hits percy for five it is third and six army one timeout left oh my goodness if florida runs draw here they deserve to lose nope they're gonna put it in tebow's hands pressure check down oh my an army's gonna get the ball with 148 left and a chance to go tie it here we go tie rod oh wow third and 11 fourth and 11 already though so florida's defense just came to play this drive 125 left this is it final play of the game basically if, if army doesn't convert tie rod in shotgun checks it down breaks a tackle falls forward he's a yard short brendan rice breaks a tackle gets catapulted forward but unless there's a miracle here no romero and tebow's gonna knee and that's gonna do it the gators urban meyer wins his fourth national championship florida gets it done tim tebow wins a national championship won the heisman this year and yeah, I believe that's Urban's fourth chip. Going to put him one behind Woody Hayes at Ohio State. 
Oh, that was a good game. Army is here to stay. They have just been, you know, they have a good squad, super deep. And it's not like when Cal had that good team with Brady and they're like, once they lose, like this team feels like they're going to be here for a while. They're recruiting really well. Tebow, 190 yards, three touchdowns. He had at least one rushing touchdown, I think, as well. And so he had 64 touchdowns this year for Tebow. Romero, they need a better running back. I didn't really like that Romero guy. Here were their receivers. They got Cooley and Percy back next year. And they have Julio Jones, who didn't even play this year. Like, that's going to be their top three. That Cooley, Percy, and Julio. I really hope Tebow comes back. Tebow could try to win his... Uh, Two-time Heisman, two-time Natty. He's basically in the spot Vince Young was in, but Vince Young got benched. So that was so dumb. Uh, but wow, Tebow and Florida. Okay, so wrap up this season here. Florida, UCLA, Nebraska Army. If you're Nebraska too, that was such a tough loss to Penn State. And then Penn State ends up losing their bowl game. Um, Heisman, we already seen, but Tebow wins it all. So Tebow led the country in passing, rushing Jonathan Stewart, LaShawn McCoy. Uh, there was receiving, tackles, sacks. Walter Thurman led it for uh, interceptions with seven points per game. Florida, best offense in the country, then Penn State, then Nebraska. Uh, defensively, Memphis right there. Army, Ohio, Memphis, Nebraska. Okay, let's go look at some players here. So, Tebow, I really hope he comes back for one more year. He'll be a four-year start. He's got a chance to break some records, man. For real. Uh, Mario Neal, really good two-year starter for Nebraska. Really close. Over a thousand. Oh, actually, I didn't even look at what was how many rushing yards did Tebow have? Over a thousand rushing yards this year. Jeez, he had two picks, but Neal was really good. They're gonna have Stafford next year. I mean, Stafford technically, I guess, could leave early. Chase Daniels is really good there. Running backs, Darren McFadden, 1,300 yards this year. Jonathan Stewart, we already looked at. He's been crazy. Jamal Charles, first thousand yard rushing season this year. Uh, yeah, they they honestly don't use Mendenhall a ton, but he was just their lead back, super consistent for them. Ray Rice with Michigan, three straight thousand yard seasons. Receiver, uh, Deshaun. Obviously, 601, honestly, in Nebraska's system's pretty good. Dwayne Jarrett, really, like, honestly, super consistent. Started as a freshman and just never, just kind of got a little bit better each year. We already looked at DHB, but just about four straight thousand yard seasons. Percy, first thousand yard year this year. He's been kind of behind DHB this whole time. Col Coley, we look, Crabtree at Kansas State, really it hasn't been great. Tight end, Jermichael Finley, uh, six. Yeah, he actually has had a pretty good career. He's kind of went down in receiving yards, but like for a tight end in this game, that's pretty good. Gronk, 579, pretty good for a sophomore. Aaron Hernandez at Navy at 1,000 yards. Navy's just throwing the football. D-tackle, Sue is going to be done. Uh, just really good in that middle at Florida defense. Oklahoma, Gerald McCoy, he's got one more year. Geno Atkins at Arizona State. Free safety, Malcolm Jenkins. Feels like he's been at Georgia forever. Eric Berry, Harrison Smith. Oh, yeah, Florida's got Harrison Smith as well. Eric Berry at Louisville. Um, what about Earl Thomas? He was in that class with them. Did they move him to strong save? Oh, there's Earl. Earl at AM. It's a nice pickup for AM. AM's doing decent recruiting. Kenny Phillips at Bama has been there a long time. Taylor May is going to be back for one more year at Nebraska. Cam Chancellor, Virginia Tech. Uh, Myron Roll, Penn State. Okay. So that is where we are at. We are going to go to the offseason. We're just going to go look at National Signing Day, then look at our coaches. Okay, National Signing Day. We got some big guys up for grabs here. Let's see where they end up. So AJ going to Georgia. That's a big pickup for them. Utah gets Carr. Running back. We knew Lacey and Richardson ends up at Florida State. That is the first time they've gotten a big guy in a while. We knew Josh Gordon. We knew Tavon and we knew Jeffrey. Tackle Luan goes to UCLA. I like that fit. DJ goes to UCLA as well. So a couple of book in tackles and they have Matt Khalil right now. Gabe Jackson, Oklahoma, Florida gets Warmack. Zach Martin goes to Nebraska. I like that fit. Um, we knew Olivier was, oh no, Olivier's at the U and then we knew Khalil Mack is going to Florida. Then Richardson and IU, we knew Fletcher Cox going to Florida. Jarvis Jones goes to Oklahoma. Middles, we knew Keekly. UCLA is getting some boys. UCLA is keeping it going. Manti Teo, Fresno State. Cornerback, uh, Gilmore, UCLA. So UCLA is doing really well. UCLA, Florida, Oklahoma, to me, really stood out. 
Yeah, UCLA. Five. Penn State or Ohio State. Yeah, they got Keekly Jeffrey. Those were their kind of two bigs of those guys. Penn State right there. Nebraska, Oklahoma, Florida. Florida only signed 18 guys, but they got some studs. Uh, Warmack, Cox, and Khalil really beefing up the interior there. So that's where we're sitting there. Let's go to the off sea or the next season. This is going to be the 2010 season coming up, guys. We're basically in the last decade. We are going to go into the 2020s a little bit here, but crazy. Um, yeah, we're going to look at our coaches here. Okay, so Barry Alvarez is at Michigan State. Bobby Bowden back at Florida State has a low job security already. Mac Brown at Troy. Uh, Louisiana Monroe for Pete still there. Harbaugh safe at Mississippi State. Woody Hayes safe for now. If they got rid of Woody Hayes, Ohio State, come on, guys. He's won you five national championships. Just don't do it. Lou Holtz, like Notre Dame has not been the same since they fired Lou Holtz. Don James, Jimmy Johnson at Arizona, Chip Kelly at Colorado, Urban, um, Urban is safe, obviously, at Florida. I believe that was his fourth chip. Yeah, that was his fourth chip. So he's just one behind Woody. Uh, Robert Neeland at Mizzou, Ed Orgeron at Nevada, Tom Osborne safe at Nebraska, Joe Pa hot seat at Miami after one year, Gary Patterson hot seat at Oregon State, Nick Saban low at Wisconsin, Bo Schembechler, he's doing well at Penn State, really well at Penn State, Schnellenberger doing really well at Georgia Tech, he's been there forever now, 12 years, Kirby uh, safe for now at uh, Georgia, don't fire Kirby smart guys, Dabo low at Bama, that's his 10th year at Bama, wow, 10 years! Feels like he just got there. I mean, he's got to pick it up, though. Barry, safe for now. P D Oklahoma, do not fire Barry Switzer. Whittingham, safe. Yeah, so that's kind of where we are sitting. Okay, I'm going to make the net 2010 class, guys, and then we are going to hop into it. All right, guys, 2010 season recruiting classes made. Once again, this is a good one. Definitely not QB running back heavy, but all the other positions, we have a pretty good group. So those are kind of the weak points. Like, we only have one QB, one running back at each position. So if we look at QBs, the only one is Blake Bortles. Now, he obviously was a really high pick in the NFL draft. was a bit of a bust, was decent in college, looking like he's going to stay in Florida. Florida, Florida State, Miami are his top schools. Then running back, once again, we only have one. It is Marcus Lattimore. Now, Lattimore played at South Carolina, was a super big recruit and was like really good in college. And he blew out his knee and was never really the same. Wasn't great in the NFL. But uh, yeah, like I said, before he got hurt, he was really good. He's looking at Georgia, Georgia Tech, South Carolina. Okay, so those are kind of our weakest positions. We got a wide receiver. We got four. Uh, we also have no tight ends. But we got four wide receivers. First, Robert Woods played at USC, played for the Rams, Bills, you know, a bunch of teams in the NFL. Really good at USC. He's from Cali, but he's looking at Florida, Ohio State, Penn State, Minnesota. We got DeAndre Hopkins, one of the best receivers in the NFL. Really good at Clemson. Was a first round pick by the Texans. Uh, Texans. He's looking at Oklahoma, Penn State, LSU, Michigan. Penn State's looking like they're starting to do some damage. Then we got Keenan Allen. Played at Cal, even though he's from North Carolina. Uh, still playing with the Chargers right now. He's looking at North Carolina State, Duke, Georgia Tech. So all kind of like ACC type schools. Then our last one is going to be Justin Hunter. Now he's from Virginia. He played at Tennessee. Big, like 6'4", 200 pound receiver. Uh, he's looking at Florida, Minnesota, Ohio State, Texas, and Penn State. So that's our receivers. Now we go to offensive line and we have three tackles. First, uh, we got Luke Jokel. He played at Texas A&M. Um, big time recruit, high NFL pick. He's looking at Nebraska, Purdue, Penn State, UCLA. We got Jake Matthews also played at A&M with Jokel. I believe he was like a top 10-ish pick by the by the Falcons. Um, he's looking at Texas, OU, Nebraska, AM. Then we got Central Henderson, who is one of the, the number one recruits out of high school. He played, uh, he signed at Miami. He was a bit of a bust, but like 6'7, 330, absolutely massive from Minnesota. He's looking at Florida, UCLA, Ohio State, Oklahoma. Then we got one guard. It's Brandon Sheriff. He's from Iowa, played at Iowa, first round pick by the Redskins, like top 10. Um, he's looking at Nebraska, Ohio State, Minnesota, Oklahoma. 
Puma. Okay, moving on defensive ends, we got William Golston. Now, he's from Detroit, Michigan. He played at Michigan State, 6'6", 270. Just absolute freak show size defensive end. He's again at Notre Dame, Ohio, Kent State, Bowling Green. Vic Beasley, we got, uh, he played at Clemson. Really kind of undersized pass rusher. Got drafted in the top 10 by the Falcons. He's looking at Nebraska, Penn State, UCLA, Stanford, Florida. Then we move on to defensive tackles. Is a good group. First, Aaron Donald from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You know, one of the best interior or defensive linemen of all time in the NFL, debatably the best, was really good at Pitt. Also, he's a first round pick. He's looking at Ohio State, Stanford, Minnesota, Washington. We got Sharif Floyd, also from PA. He actually played at Florida, though. He's 6'3", 300 pounds, looking at Nebraska, Ohio State, Oklahoma, UCLA. Then we got one more. It is Dominic Easley, who also played at Florida. Really good kind of undersized pass rusher on the inside. He's looking at Ohio State, Michigan, Nebraska, Penn State, Minnesota. I think we only have okay we got three linebackers so we got actually we do have an outside so we got anthony barr as our outside linebacker he played at ucla he's looking at ucla stanford usc he's kind of an interesting linebacker and the fact he can rush the passer play and cover he's big six four so he's always like an interesting player to see where he lands we got alec ogletree now ogletree played at georgia uh he's from the state he's looking at georgia tech georgia florida and then our last linebacker is CJ Mosley from Alabama. He played at Bama, played with the Ravens, Jets uh, in the NFL. He's looking at Florida, Ohio State, Georgia Tech, Bama. We go to cornerbacks. We got Bradley Roby. Now, Roby played at Ohio State. He's from Georgia. Good, you know, really good coverage, sticky corner. He's looking at Florida, Nebraska, or Florida, Notre Dame, Miami and alabama then we got dean milner who played at bama he's from the state of alabama top like 10 ish pick by the jets who's kind of a bust in the nfl but was really good in college he's looking at michigan nebraska ohio state U ucla usc go to free safeties we got three we got tyran matthew you know honey badger at lsu one of the best college football players of all time from louisiana he's looking at ohio state nebraska oklahoma a and m we got lamarcus joiner he played at florida state uh really good undersized kind of safety corner hybrid he's looking at florida florida state georgia bama and then we got eric reed who played at lsu he's looking at uh, michigan ohio state nebraska texas so that's recruiting class guys once again it's a pretty good class we low on qbs that always kind of limits how good i think it is for me okay we are going to go to the start of the season so this is going to be the second last season this 2010 season second last season of this video and then we only have two videos left which is crazy to me it is crazy how far this this series has came like where it started in 1980 it felt like such a daunting task when i sat down to record the first one i was like i have to do this 42 times like it felt like holy but hey it's 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 I, I i'm able to spread it out i'm a little bit of a, uh, about a week and a half ahead of when the videos come out so i always have like time to do it so it's not too bad it just felt very very you know daunting when i first kind of decided i want to do this okay looking at the top 25 we got florida a plus not as quite as good on defense nebraska a plus across the board ucla only a b plus but ucla is always in it they're always around penn state looks pretty good this year army once again a plus across the board georgia tech a minus ohio state a minus minnesota a minus so it really looks like army nebraska florida the top teams in the country with a lot of b minus oh oklahoma as well a plus georgia looks all right a for texas we'll have to check them out purdue okay we got to remember to look at purdue i never look at them oh a&m's back up at an a plus so a&m who do they have a minus for miami yeah so definitely uh some big guys to look at let's look at the heisman i'm kind of hoping tim Tebow. it'd be cool to see a two-time heisman winner we got jake locker at penn state who's honestly oh this will be his fourth year starting wow he made the national no no we saw him he won the big 10 last year but i mean he's been really good for penn state and then uh yeah then some auto generated guys preseason all americans Tebow, LaShawn McCoy, Trent Williams. I don't know why it's a, it's a lot of auto-generated guys lately on defense. We got Taylor Mays at Nebraska. If we go second team, Jake Locker. Yeah, a lot of auto-generated. Julio Jones as a returner. Florida's offense, man. I Their offense is insane this year. Um, okay, let's look at... So Ohio State over there. Okay, so Ohio's not great this year, but then they hop right back up. Oklahoma. 
They're at 99 right now, so I think they got about a two-year run, and then it looks like they drop off a little bit. Army, right in that top five range. A&M looks like they're really, I mean, they're at 99 right now. Florida staying around that top five. Texas with Andrew Luck, Josh, uh, Josh Gordon. They're really building something there. Nebraska right there. Purdue looks not bad. UCLA still around that top five. Minnesota, Georgia's kind of falling off a little bit. Notre Dame's just all right. Penn State's kind of in their big year. If Penn State wants to win something, I think this is the year they're going to do it. Um, let's look at some of these rosters. Okay, so Bama. Courtney Upshaw, but yeah, they're not great. Definitely got to look at Army. Vontae David, Beanie Wells, Tyrod Taylor. Their top three, that is very good. And a ton of depth down their roster. They also have Terrell Pryor, who's really only going to start for two years because Tyrod, oh, yeah, because Tyrod's only a junior. So yeah, that's kind of crazy. They made the Natty last year. Florida, now this is interesting. So they got Percy, Tim Tebow, they got Pouncey. Okay. I know I went and quickly looked at Florida when I was making the recruiting class because I wanted to see if Tim Tebow was coming back. And this Covington guy was also a 99. So I did not want to get in that position like we did with Vince Young, where Vince Young won a natty, won a Heisman. He came back for his senior year and he was the backup quarterback because they had 299. So I put this Covington down to a 97, but I don't know if they are still going to have him over Tebow on the depth chart. It would actually really annoy me because Tebow had one of the best seasons we've ever seen. He's a three-year starter, won a natty and a Heisman, and all of a sudden they bench him. So if that happens, I'm honestly going to be kind of pissed just because I want to see what will happen. But this team is really good this year. Harrison, they got, look at their receiving core. Tim Debo throwing a Percy Harvin, this Collie, Coley, and Julio freaking Jones, man. Like, this team is freaking loaded, especially on offense. So, I, I think their defense is still pretty good, but this is an offensive team. They did get a few bit. They got Fletcher Cox and, oh, Khalil Mack on defense as recruits. But, uh, yeah, Florida. Okay, moving on to Georgia. T, like I said, Tebow better be starting. Marcel Darius, uh, Golden Tate, Daquan Bowers, EJ Manuel. Those are all kind of younger guys too. So they actually could be pretty good in a few years. They don't have some great, they don't have a great upperclassman on the team right now though. Uh, LSU hasn't really been good in a few years. They did get Patrick Peterson, but Miami, same thing as LSU. Nothing. Michigan, kind of the same. A little better than those two schools, but uh minnesota who did they oh they have rg3 and they have the other pouncy does he have receivers to throw to he's got one receiver there oh yeah 96 and 89 87 they're all juniors though they need the sophomore to be good in a few years but yeah i mean yeah rg3 let's see him put up some stats for the golden gophers uh navy they have aaron hernandez he put up some crazy stats okay nebraska look at this nebraska team they have five 99s plus Trent Williams, who's a 98 at their top of their roster. Wow. Trent Williams, this Brent Jones, nasty free safety, Matt Stafford, Taylor Mazla, Sean McCoy is the best players on their team. That is crazy. This team is loaded. They only got Stafford for a year. They honestly kind of need a... I mean, this guy will probably start next year. He looks decent. But LaShawn McCoy, crazy stable of running backs. Uh, just okay at receiver. But I mean, they, they have a really good temp, tight end. But you, we know they're just going to be th uh, throwing the football. You got Trent... Or running the football. They got Trent Williams with Zach Martin, who's a freshman. But still, uh, rest of their O-line is good. Like, okay. Ends pretty good. They're they, they just that top of that roster. Their D line's good. Linebacker, really, yeah, really solid at linebacker. Corner, they got oh, they got Richard Sherman. Wow, look at their corners. Holy, and their secondary is insane. And then this Jones and their backup safety is insane. So this Nebraska team, if they don't win it this year, and you're a Nebraska fan, and they go through this whole run of players they've had without any chips. That is going to be just heartbreaking. Okay, go down to Ohio State. Once again, I think they're on a bit of a just, uh, but they're going to come up. Uh, they've been getting some really good recruiting classes. They got Everson Griffin, JJ Watt at defensive ends. Uh, they have a lot of just kind of young guys coming up. They got Blaine Gabbert, who's going to be a three. Oh, he kind of he started last year. Gabbert's going to be a four-year starter for them, obviously, unless he leaves early. 
Uh, they got Alshon Jeffrey at receiver. A lot of talent on defense. I, I don't think Ohio State's going to win it this year, but they are, you know, they're they're coming back up here. Uh, we got um, Oklahoma, who's going to be right there in it. They have a nasty running back, 99 speed, with Gerald McCoy, Sam Bradford, Brandon Graham, Brandon Spikes, Des Bryant, Joe Hayden. Whoo, this team, Cam Hayward, Janoris Jenkins. This team is freaking loaded as well. How, how are they at QB once they lose Bradford? This is Michael Morris. He'll be okay for a year. They definitely got to get a recruit in. And Bradford did get hurt last year, but I hope he stays healthy. And Oklahoma definitely has a shot to take home a chip. Penn State, like I said, if they're going to get it done, they did lose Alshon Jeffrey, but you have Jake Locker, Rob Gronkowski just leading the way on the offense. They have another just nasty tight end. That is enough to do a ton of damage. So ride those two. You have you know a pretty good roster surrounding them, and you got a shot. Tennessee, nothing. Texas, Vaughn Miller, Andrew Luck. That's who they're building around, and they have some really good receivers, young receivers. They got this Hughes, who's a junior. They got Kendall Wright and Josh Gordon. So with Andrew Luck, with Vaughn Miller rushing off the edge, I like it. I, I would like to see Texas be back a little bit here. We got a and m They're 99 overall. They got Wisniewski, Sergio Kindle, Earl Thomas, um, some other nice players. I don't think they're quite a 99 team. They look really good, but uh, Eddie Lacy, who's their QB? They do have a good QB, and they'll have a good QB next year. So they got a good two-year run where good, solid QB. They got Justin Blackman. Only They actually have some good kind of underclassmen, too, who they're developing. So A&M, they're going to be a tough out this year for sure. Um, UCLA, Dunlap. Yeah, they look, ooh, yeah, you, UCLA definitely doesn't look quite as fearsome as they have for the last while here. Uh, still have pretty decent QB play, but they lost their really good group of running backs they have with Jay Stu and Spiller. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been so good for the last freaking like 15 years. I'm not going to count them out, but they don't look great on paper. Like USC looks almost as good on paper and UC, USC has been horrible. Washington. Okay, the only other team I wanted to look at was Purdue. I forgot to look at them because they were actually looked really good. Um, Marvin Austin, uh, Mark Ingram. So they have some some studs there. Who's their QB? Just okay at QB. So pretty looks okay, but I, I don't know nothing nothing crazy. So that is where we're sitting, guys. The one thing, if freaking Tebow's the backup. I'm going to be so pissed. Like, I, I just want to see if, like, Tebow throw to Percy and Julio after just winning a Natty and a Heisman and you bench him. Like, I'll lose my mind. Let's go to week nine. So, QB Blake Bortles looking like Michigan, Florida State, maybe Bama. Running back Marcus Lattimore, Appalachian State, or South Carolina. Looking at wide receivers Robert Woods, Navy, Minnesota, or Florida. DeAndre Hopkins, Georgia Tech, LSU, OU. Keenan Allen locked in at North Carolina State. And then lastly, Justin Hunter looking like Flo. Oh, yeah, he's getting like recruited by no one right now. Uh, no tight ends. Offensive line. Luke Jokel looking like UCLA, Nebraska, Purdue. Jake Matthews locked in at Texas. Protect Andrew Luck for a year or two there. Central Henderson looking like OU, Florida, Ohio State. Guard, Brandon Sheriff, looking like UCLA, Nebraska. The two best running teams in the in the country. Going after the number one, just road gate rating guard. That makes sense. Defensive end, William Golston, looking like small schools, Ohio or Bowling Green. Uh, Vic Beasley, locked in at Nebraska. Big pickup for Nebraska. He tackle Aaron Donald, looking like Minnesota, Washington, Syracuse. Minnesota is doing good at just being in the mix. Sharif Floyd going to OU. Big pickup there. Dominic Easley going to... Oh, if they got Aaron Donald and Dominic Beasley on the inside for Minnesota, that'd be crazy. Uh, Anthony Barr, I had a feeling UCLA. That was his real life al alma mater, so he's going to stick stay at home. Alec Ogletree, Vandy, Georgia Tech, Appalachian State. CJ Mosley looking like Florida, Bama, Ohio State. Go to cornerback. Bradley Roby looking like the U or Bama. D. Milner locked in at Nebraska. That's it for corners. And three free safeties. We got Tyram Matthew, Nebraska, Tulane, AM, but Penn State in the lead. Lamarcus Joyner, Tulane, uh, Florida State, Georgia, Bama. And Eric Reed, Texas, Michigan, Nebraska. But it looks like Texas has a pretty commanding lead for him. So 
Interesting. Oklahoma, Nebraska. We're kind of standing out off kind of off the top of my head there. Top 25. So Penn State 7-0 playing at Ohio State this week. Ohio State's unranked. Oklahoma, TCU, Bama, Nebra uh, UCF, but are undefeated. Nebraska, one loss. Florida, one loss. LSU, Georgia Tech. UCLA still only one loss. They're in the mix, even though they're not, this is not their best team. Uh, Penn State, Ohio State's obviously a big game, even though Ohio, so Penn State, they're undefeated right now. They have no ranked opponents, but they do have to play Ohio State and on the road and go on the road at Minnesota. And Minnesota obviously has RG3. Oklahoma, not a super tough schedule left. Uh, Bama 8, no, I kind of glossed, glossed over that, but they still have to play LSU and Florida. Nebraska 6-1, and one. they're at Minnesota this week, which is not an easy game. UCF, Cincinnati, met. they do have two ranked. Florida, number four, Bama. I think we'll just probably go to the end of the year, though. There wasn't anything that super jumped out. Maybe we'll just go conference championship. Kareem Meadows leading the way. LaShawn, like, I, I have a feeling... I have a feeling Tebow got benched. Like, I'm just going to be angry, man. There's the passing leaders. Tyrod in second. We'll be forgetting about Cam Newton because he went to Grambling State. But there's Newton. Sean McCoy, he probably is going to rush for 2,000 yards, I bet. Tavon Austin, I forgot about him at USC. Leading the country in receiving yards. Cool. Uh, interceptions. Okay. Don't usually do this, but I, I just want to look at Florida. I want to see if Tebow got benched or if he's just not throwing for as many yards this year. They're splitting time, but I don't know what that means. Why are they splitting time? 272, 218. I, I don't know what that means. So, yeah, Tebow's not playing like he did last year, which is just annoying. One of them might have got hurt. I, I don't really know. Oh, I'll kind of quickly look at, we'll just look at some team stats here. Points per game, Army, Georgia State. Uh, Oklahoma, Penn State, Nebraska. So Cam Newton's doing good with Georgia State. Ah, uh, very good. And then defense, USF, Memphis, Oklahoma, Penn State. A lot of top 10 schools in the uh, top defenses there. Okay, let's go to conference championship weekend. All righty, so let's see where we are at. Penn State, Oklahoma, undefeated. Florida, two losses, didn't make the conference championship, so they will not be playing uh, in the in the big game again. We got Penn State, Nebraska. If Nebraska wins, they have a shot to get in still for sure. If LSU beats Georgia and one of these two teams falters up top, they're probably in. Okay, we're gonna sim this game first. Now, if LSU wins this and one of those other team falters, they're probably in. So let's see. Georgia wins though, LSU. Oh, that's a crushing loss. That's huge for Nebraska though. Cause now if Nebraska wins, they're probably in. Even if like, so this game, UCLA wins, they're not gonna get in, but they could get Oklahoma out. Oklahoma wins though, barely. So OU punches their ticket. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be the winner of Nebraska, Penn State, because LSU's out now. It could be Florida, but I have a feeling if Nebraska beats number one, they're gonna jump Florida and they'll just be in, which I'm fine with for sure. So I, it's gonna be basically either Penn State or Nebraska in it. So it's gonna be Penn State, Oklahoma for sure, both undefeated. Now, I've been talking about Nebraska. This Oklahoma team's very good as well. Des Bryant, Sam Bradford, Gerald McCoy. Um, they might be the team with a really good running back. Yeah, they... Oh, Cam Newton gets it done for Georgia State. 3,600 yards, 52 total touchdowns. Okay. I was not expecting Cam to win it at that small school. We got LaShawn, Jake Locker, almost, and, and Tyrod Taylor on the list as well. Okay, let's just hop right into this one. This is going to be a good game. I you mean, Oklahoma's got to be the favorite, but Penn State you know undefeated they've done what they needed to do so second and third on offense for the pair of them um both a little bit more run heavy than pass but uh defensively both really solid as well um penn state's a little bit better but oklahoma's right there so this is gonna be a really good game des at the top for them they got joe hayden they just have so much talent brandon graham and Jarvis Jones are out for the season. So they actually do have some pretty big injuries, especially the Brandon Graham ones. So Penn State, I mean, that's that's knocking off a bit of, a bit of defensive talent for OU. So this would be Oklahoma's, I want to say, this would be Oklahoma's 
fourth win, which I think that would tie Florida. And then I think Penn State, yeah, they just won one in 1986 with Joe Paw. So, so this would be big for them to kind of just get back at, in the national kind of prominence. So we're going to sim through the first quarter here. 10 nothing Oklahoma. 17, okay, 13 7. OU has the lead. Penn State football, though, and Locker is leading the charge. Third and nine here for Jake. Shotgun trips to the bottom, directing traffic back there. Drops back, fires it underneath, finds Rob Gronkowski. He's got a bunch of guys out in front, and Gronk goes for 24 yards down the sideline and picks it up. Big throw there for Locker. Three, five, fourth and inches. And they go for it and get it on fourth and inches. Locker gets a touchdown. KOU football. They got third and 15. Way behind the sticks here. Sam Bradford going to be in shotgun. Kind of a pistol look here. Two by two. Drops back. Time. Steps up in the pocket. He's going to check that down. He's going to be short. Lamar Terrell is short. That's going to be fourth and five here for Oklahoma. They're going to punt third and nine. Penn State punts. Here's a third and one here for OU. Tie ball game. Bradford 134 and a touchdown. But they're 0 for 4 on third down. They need to make a play right here. Bradford, they're going to motion a guy across. Do a little jet handoff here. And he's going to be short. Fourth and one. They're 0 for 5 on third downs, Oklahoma. That is not going to get it done. And they go for the field goal and take a three-point lead locker leading the charge back though he's got a third and five at about midfield here let's see if he can convert two by two kind of a doubles look gronk at tight end you know that's going to be where he wants to go if he gets open gronk in the flats can he break a tackle no gronk is going to be tackled short that is a great tackle to tackle in the open field on gronk he goes down oklahoma back out on offense third and ten though they are they have not been good on third downs oh for five that has been the difference that's what keeping penn state in it and they're gonna run draw you know you're not getting that yeah i hate that call they do that all the time so annoying third and 15 yeah they're not gonna pick that up oklahoma 13 seconds i got five seconds field goal is good wow they hit a 48 yarder with one second left okay we're gonna sim through the third quarter here uh penn state scores a touchdown oklahoma nothing okay then oklahoma scores a late touchdown at the end of the half it is 27 20 penn state football they hit a couple of huge plays second and 12 third and 11 field goal is not horrible here uh obviously you want to score a touchdown but even just kind of cut it down I, I would be fine you know you don't have to get too too aggressive here I'm gonna check it down yeah yeah just take your three fourth and five i wouldn't risk it get it down to a four point game then if you can score a touchdown oh but they are gonna go for this so they're gonna be a little aggressive here fourth and five it is a reasonable down even if they do do something dumb like run a draw at least it's somewhat doable they're gonna run a screen though he has some blocking he's gonna get it just gets the five yards locker in the flat and they pick it up seven yard loss third and 12 okay so now you if you want to go for it on fourth again you probably got to get it down to about fourth and three fourth and four again so you need something big here trips to the top locker gonna go screen again i don't like that call as much oh it's right there though fourth and two that is once again very do doable and they're gonna go for it again <laughs> Here is the play of the day. Basically, they're either going to tie it up here or the Oklahoma is going to get a huge stop. Locker, they're going to run draw and he's always oh, almost in first and goal. So they are, do pick up just kind of in between there and get the first down. But now, I mean, they should. They're going to have four tries to punch it in minus three. Oh, my gosh. It's third and two. Oh, my goodness. So it's third and goal from the one let's see if penn state this has been a long drive of a lot of plays a lot of fourth downs they're gonna hand it off and they get in and they are gonna tie this up pretty late in the fourth quarter here obviously oklahoma is gonna get the ball though and a chance to go take the lead two yards dropped third and eight here for ou two of ten on third down you do not want to just give penn state the ball back right here with four minutes left 
OU drops back. Bradford, boom, what a throw. That is some great touch on that football. He dropped it into a bucket. School receiving a record for Williams, 1,600 yards. Okay, drops it in a bucket, goes to him again. Six, hits Williams for 22 Third and six, 318 left. Bradford's been really good. 296, two scores. They're going empty here. Bradford, a chance to take home a natty. Oh, they're going to run QB draw. Oh my God, he almost did a backflip. Oh my, I hate that call. Oh my, so they're going to have to kick a field goal. It is good. So Penn State's got a lot of time. Second and five, third and five. Oh my gosh, it's fourth and five. They're going to have to punt. They do. Second and one. Third and three. Touchdown. Oh, wow. Oklahoma just hit a 58-yard touchdown run. And that's basically going to do it unless Penn State has an absolute miracle. First and goal from the nine here. They just hit three huge passes. But, I mean, they only have one timeout. They basically need a score here and then a... Um, Drops back, locker, over the middle. Yeah, they need a score and an onside kick. Probably not going to get it done. Oklahoma is on the doorstep of winning their fourth national championship of the sim to tie Florida for second most in the sim. Yeah, we're just going to kind of sim through here. I don't think anything will Oh, they did get... Yeah, they went for an onside kick. It's over. There we go. Oklahoma wins it. Uh, crazy craziness four natties what a throw that was on third down and bradford dropped that in a bucket that was a beautiful throw fourth national championship for oklahoma the sooners they've been interesting with it too because theirs are very spread out like they'll go just like 10 years without even making one win another one like their last win was their last win was 1997 to 2010 so 13 years in between it but they've always been in the mix they're not really like ever falling off bradford 324 two touchdowns Lester, this was the running back who was really good. He ended up actually getting hurt. Um, Bradford, decent running. This Williams just had a big year. Not really using Dez. I mean, Dez is the better player. I don't know why they go to him so much. Penn State, Gronk was just okay. Their two receivers kind of led the way. Rushing, Motley was pretty good. And uh, Locker was really good. 3-8-14, three, three touchdowns. He also ran for a score. So four total touchdowns. But OU gets it done. Okay, so here we are at the end of the season. Let's go through all our stuff. So OU, obviously, number one team. We got Florida, UCF, Penn State, Georgia Tech, LSU, Nebraska, USF, Army. Heisman, we already seen. Let's look at All-Americans. Uh, Cam, first team All-American. LaShawn McCoy. He finished with 1,900 yards. His last two seasons were really good for Nebraska. Uh, yeah, Cam. Really good season this year. I mean, they're not gonna like win anything is the only problem. Like he won't, we won't see him in a natty or anything like that. JJ Watt for Ohio State, seven, he's had 20 sacks already in three years. That's really good for this sim. We don't see a ton of sacks. Joe Hayden at corner, um, three picks, not a bad year. Taylor Mays, first team All-American again, um, back to back years for him. Second team, Tyrod, uh, 45 touchdown. Wow, big year for Tyrod um coley was coley's just been really consistent for florida gronk 909 this year that's big for a tight end and there we go cam chancellor for va tech wins the thorpe this year as well so look at freshman Tavon. oh my gosh he had a that he was leading the country in receiving yards at one point as a true freshman that's crazy he kind of slowed down at the second part of the season but gabe jackson taylor luan dj fluker fletcher cox for florida uh stefan gilmore for ucla there we go so tyrod and cam leading the way for receipt passing and jake locker on the list as well Lashawn just over two th under 2000 mark ingram right there uh that's receiving leaders tackle leaders sack leaders let's look at team stats really quick so best offense florida oklahoma georgia state penn state defensively usf penn state so penn state was really good balanced team overall same with oklahoma okay let's go through recruiting here so blake going to florida state that's a big pickup for florida state Lattimore gets south carolina his alma mater in real life robert woods going to florida georgia tech for d hop north carolina state and justin hunter going to penn state cool 
go tackles, Luke Jokel, Nebraska, Texas, and then Central going to Florida. So all kind of big schools there. Share. I like that Nebraska share. That's just like a match between them. I think they have Zach Martin. Those are going to be their two guards. That's crazy. William Golston going to Ohio. Beasley going to Nebraska. Donald going to Minnesota. Shree Floyd going to Oklahoma. And Beasley going to Minnesota. That is a crazy pair for Minnesota. Uh, we knew Barr going to UCLA. Uh, Ogletree, Georgia Tech, CJ Mosley going to Ohio State, Roby uh, going to Miami, Milner going to Nebraska, Matthew, okay, so Nebraska got a ton of defenders, Joiner, Georgia, and Eric Reed, Texas, so Nebraska came out of there with a great class really good they gotta be the number one yeah a lot of four they only signed 18 guys but oklahoma really good as well army texas florida kind of up there washington minnesota yeah army consistently in like the top five now for recruiting almost every year didn't really i did notice a bit of ohio state man if they fire woody a's we riot i just want to see a few of these guys make it to the end of the sim with the same teams right now we have three if woody gets fired i think it's just barry at ou osborne at nebraska urban at florida and then woody hayes if if he doesn't get fired so Let's see. I might be missing one, but I think that's it. Alvarez, Michigan State. Bobby Bowden back again at Florida State. Already on the hot seat. Mac Brown at Troy. Pete Carroll at Western Kentucky. Jim Harbaugh hot seat at Mississippi State. Woody Hayes. Okay, he's safe. So I don't know where Ohio State finished. I don't know why I was scared. But okay, he's back. Lou Holtz, DC. Uh, Don James. Jimmy at... Uh, Arizona, Chip Kelly at Colorado, Urban obviously safe at Florida, Robert Nealon low at Mizzou, Ed Orgeron safe for now, uh, Tom Osborne safe even though he hasn't won his natty, Joe Pa low at Miami, Gary Patterson safe at Temple, Nick Saban at Kent State, Bo Schembechler definitely safe. He's been he's doing well at Penn State. Howard Schnellenberger is doing really well at Georgia Tech. He's got him like a top ten team. Georgia safe with uh, Kirby. Steve Spurrier OC. Uh, Dabo safe at Bama. Barry Switzer safe at OU. Kyle Whittingham DC, and that is it. So no really big firings or anything there with our big time coaches. So there we go, guys. We're gonna wrap it up here. I'm gonna make the next recruiting class, and the next season is gonna be the last season of this uh, video, and then. Yeah, we're on to the next one. All right, guys. So 2011 season, this is going to be the last season of this video. Now, I just made the recruiting class, but I screwed up. I accidentally made the 2012 recruiting class. So I basically am just going to have to flip the recruiting classes. So this was supposed to be the 2011 class with like Clowney and Odell Beckham and stuff. And I accidentally made the class after it. And then next year, I'll just have to make the Clowney and Odell class. So it's not really a big deal. It just changes those two classes up. But I, so I actually noticed after I made four guys, but once I make them, there's literally nothing I can do. I can't like delete the players or anything. So we are just going to have to, yeah, just be slightly out of order, but it's really not going to affect anything. Okay. So we're going to hop into this class. It's a good class. Not the best. I'd say it's pretty good though. And we are coming obviously off just Oklahoma, Penn state in the national championship. So let's see. So at QB, we got two. The, the star number one is going to be Jameis Winston. Whoever gets him going to have, you know, kind of that franchise, all-American type QB for a few years. So right now he's looking at Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Notre Dame. Then the other one is going to be Paxton Lynch. Now he... Now, he played at Memphis. He was a pretty high pick, like a high second round pick by the Broncos. He's looking at SC, Texas, Arizona State, Florida. If we move on to running backs, we got two once again. First, Kenyon Drake. He played at Bama, but he's from Georgia. He's looking at Oklahoma, UCLA, Florida, Texas. All good options. We got Todd Gurley. Absolutely nasty. He played at Georgia. Really good with the Rams in the NFL before he got hurt. He's looking at Georgia Tech, Georgia, Duke, Virginia Tech, and Memphis. Move on to wide receivers. We got four. First, Doriel Green Beckham. Now, this guy was kind of a bust in the NFL and honestly wasn't incredible in college. He was one of the top ranked high school receivers of all time. 6'5", 230. People thought he could be like the next Calvin Johnson. Um, he ended up going, he's from Missouri and ended up playing at Mizzou. He's looking at OU, Bama, Penn State, UCLA. We got Amari Cooper. Played at Alabama, but he is from Florida. You know, really good career at Bama. Really good career in the NFL. He was kind of that first receiver of that Alabama group where they had like eight first round receivers in a few years. And he was kind of the first one in that line. So that's where he's looking 
Sterling Shepard, he he's from Norman, Oklahoma, played for the Sooners in real life. It looks like that's where he's kind of leaning right now as well. Also, a &M, Texas, and TCU. And then last but not least, we got Stephon Diggs. Now, he's from Maryland. He played for Maryland and still playing with the Bills, obviously, right now. Good with the Vikings. He's looking at Oklahoma, U UCLA, USC, Florida, and Texas. We have no tight ends in this class. We do have some tackles. First, DJ Humphreys. Now, Humphreys played at Florida. He's from North Carolina. He's looking at USC, Texas, UCLA, Florida. We got Taylor Decker. He's from Ohio, played at Ohio State. Good career in the NFL as well. Looking at Ohio State, Penn State, Oklahoma, Michigan. Then we got Ronnie Stanley. First round pick by the Ravens. Still playing for them. He played, He went to Notre Dame. He's looking at uh, Arizona State, USC, USC, UCLA, and Texas. Okay, moving to guards, we got one. We got Josh Garnett, really big time recruit out of Washington. He ended up playing at Stanford. He is looking at UCLA, OU, Nebraska, USC, Florida. No centers. We got defensive ends, though. And we have some good ones. We got DeForest Buckner. Now, he played at Oregon. He's from the state of Hawaii. You know, playing with the Colts. Got drafted by in the top 10 by the Niners. He's looking at UCLA, USC, Stanford, Washington, Nebraska. We got Dante Fowler. He played at Florida. Big time, you know, pass rusher off the edge. Uh, he's looking at Texas, UCLA, Cal, Ohio State. Then moving on to defensive tackles, we got three really good ones. First, Eddie Goldman. Now, he played at Florida State on those kind of like Jameis Winston teams. He's looking at oh, big kind of nose tackle. He's looking at Oklahoma, Nebraska, Florida, UCLA. We got Leonard Williams, really good player. Top five, I think, picked by the Jets. Played at USC, but he's actually from the state of Florida. He's looking at all the kind of the Florida schools in Georgia and Bama. Uh, then we have Eric Armstead. Now, he also played at Oregon with DeForest Buckner, and then he also got drafted by the Niners in like the top 15. He's looking at Cal, UCLA, USC, uh, Colorado. So looking like he's going to stay on the coast. Uh, moving to outside linebackers, we got two. First, we got Shaq Thompson. Once again, another big time recruit. He ended up going up to play at UW in college, played with the Ca Carolina Panthers for like 10 years. He's looking at UC USC, UCLA, Cal, Stanford, Washington. Oh, then our other one is Leonard Floyd. I don't know why he's ranked like a three star. He's like a mid 80s player. He's really good. And like I made him pretty good. He's from the state of Georgia. He played for the dogs. He's looking at Georgia, Georgia Tech, uh, Florida Vandy. Then moving on to middles. And we only have one. It is Reggie Ragland. He played for Alabama. He's from the state of Bama. He's looking at UCLA, OU, um, Georgia, Ohio State. Move on to corners. We only have one. It is Ronald Darby. He played on those Florida State teams uh, with Goldman and Jameis. Kind of a good cover corner. He's looking at Washington, Cal, USC, OU, Florida. Then we move on to safeties. We have one free safety. It's Marcus May. He played at Florida. He's from the state. Uh, he's looking at Florida, Georgia. OU Texas A&M then last but not least we have Landon Collins who played at Alabama big time recruit there big time player he's from Louisiana though he's looking at Texas A&M OU Florida and LSU so that is the class and once again guys I, I got the two classes mixed up but we're just going to swap them for each other next year all right, so start of the 2011 season. Let's take a look. So Oklahoma coming in as the number one team in the country. They're an A overall. We got Florida A plus overall looking really strong. Nebraska still A plus across the board. They're looking really good. Army looks really good once again. Penn State looks pretty good. Stanford, we'll have to look at Stanford. They look all right. Georgia Tech looks all right. A&M looks really solid. UCLA looks really good. Ohio State looks really good. So a lot of kind of our tech. Texas, this actually, I like this Texas team. They got Vaughn and Andrew Luck. So this Texas team, Georgia looks good. USC, oh wow, they have an A-plus offense. We'll have to look at them. Um, is there any other standouts? Notre Dame, BYU, Minnesota. They have RG3, Purdue. They look pretty solid as well. Heisman watch. So we got Cam trying to win back-to-back -back Heismans. A uh, huge year last year. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Tyrod Taylor's been really good at Army. We'll see if he can cap something off with a big time year. That is uh, only real guys. The rest are auto generated. Look at all Americans. We got Cam. We got Tavon Austin, who was really good at USC last year. Uh, Pouncey for Florida. JJ Watt for Ohio State, who's been really, really good so far. Keep going down. We got Joe Hayden at Oklahoma, who's had a really nice career for OU. 
Um, if we go second team, we got Tyrod, we got Mark Ingram. Oh, Ingram's at Purdue. He had sick. He, that last year was his first year playing really, and he had sixteen hundred and twenty yards. Uh, Aaron Hernandez has been insane at Navy, twenty eight hundred yards in three years. Tyron Smith at Ohio State. Uh, Barrett Jones at Memphis, and that is kind of where we are sitting. I want to look at uh, championship contenders here. So we got Texas for. They look really good for like the next three years. I don't know why they're 14 the, the reason i actually sort by the second year in is because they actually rank the first year just on like the preseason ranking so it's not really a good barometer but like they're they're gonna be in the mix ucla is actually kind of yeah right there two for the foreseeable future army's right around the top five nebraska three four one one nebraska needs to get a chip florida they're still doing good, but they're kind of them in Ohio State giving up a bit of ground in the recruiting. I think Georgia looks really good. Oklahoma is really good this year, and they look like they're taking a bit of a just backward step, maybe a little bit. AM looks pretty solid. Uh, Georgia Tech. I got to look at Georgia Tech, too, because it looks like they've had some good recruiting class. I think they have Shem Beckler right now, too, like one of our actual coaches. So I'm going to sim till week nine, and then we'll kind of pick it up and we'll see how all these teams are doing and see where we're at. All right, so week nine, here we are. Let's look at the top 20. Ah, so we got UCLA. Man, this UCLA team, man. Just keep it going. Unreal. Uh, yeah, 7-0. and oh. Nebraska, sticking out. I mean, Nebraska. If you're a Nebraska fan, you want to win one so bad. Uh, A&M, Auburn, eh, nothing too crazy for them. Army. Still undefeated. A lot of ranked opponents left. USF and Minnesota. They played, yeah, that number one Nebraska game. That's really kind of cool. Oh, Georgia State. This might be the first time I ever am cheering for one of these really small schools like this. We got Cam Newton. Okay. I wonder, I don't know if, yeah, okay. Florida one loss, Stanford. We have a lot of one loss teams. Where's Texas? I was kind of hoping Texas would be around. Six and two, so they're still in it. Who do they play? TCU. Okay. Andrew Luck is going off. 2,847 yards. Andrew. Okay. We got Mark Ingram leading the country in rushing right now. Kendall Wright leading the receive in receiving. Golden Tate up there as well. There's our tackles and there's our sacks and there's the interception. Stefan Gilmore on the list. Uh, team stats. Points per game. Nebraska Army, Florida, Minnesota, Texas, UCLA. We have a lot of teams scoring in the 40s. Wow. Uh, defensively. Points, USF, Minnesota, UCLA, TCU, Oklahoma. Okay, I'm going to sim to conference championship here. All right, so here we are, conference championship weekend. Let's see what these teams are looking like. So UCLA, of course, undefeated. Army's just been killing it lately. Nebraska, only a one, that one loss to Minnesota. Florida with two losses. Georgia, three. Texas, two losses, and they don't make their conference championship game. Georgia State, only uh, they Georgia State could not lose a game. Uh, who did they lose? They lost to Fresno State. Oh, uh, Stanford. Minnesota lost. They only have one loss, and they dropped, dropped all the way down. They lost to Wisconsin by seven. They play Ohio State, A&M, Georgia. Like, Georgia has three losses, and they're four. And A&M has one loss, and they're at 10 or 11. Interesting. Texas, two losses. That's too bad. So, it looks like... Army's already in, and if UCLA beats Stanford, they're in. Um, so we're just going to kind of sim through these games. That's most likely what it's going to be. It's a good game. UCLA Army is a very good game. UCLA trying to make another conference chance. So we're just going to sim this game, and if UCLA wins, they are in, and they do. So it's going to be Army UCLA. Oh, Minnesota loses that one. Notre Dame Georgia Tech. Uh, a and Georgia. Interesting game. Um, A&M beats Georgia. Those are kind of the big ones. So we are going to have Army, UCLA, Tyrod, um, you know, really good team. I kind of want to look, who does UCLA have again? They have like Wagner. They have a couple of offensive linemen. They have uh, Car Carlos Dunlap. And then Army has like Tyrod and Trell Pryor are kind of their big, like real guys. They did look like two of the best teams before. Oh, I forgot to look at Heisman. So Powell wins the Heisman. Cam gets fourth and ej manuel gets fifth so no luck or uh 
No luck or RG3 up there, which is a little surprising. We'll kind of look at all that stuff at the end of the year. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to hop into this Army UCLA game. So they're very close. Very close. I, I think I like Army in this game, though. Army, this would be their second natty. I think this would be UCLA's fourth. And they've UCLA's made the most. So this is where they sit. Number one versus number three on defense. Six and five on offense. They are very close teams. Uh, Terrell Pryor. Yeah, so that's kind of what we're rocking with right here. Oh, Tyrod is out. So Tyrod's not playing. Terrell Pryor is the start. He broke up vertebrae in his neck or his back. But um, wow. So no Tyrod. But luckily for them, they have freaking Terrell Pryor as their backup quarterback. So they should be still have a really good shot. It's rainy. You got to think that kind of sits uh, UCLA's mold. They, uh, you know, run triple option power offense. This is a good one. I think this is Army's third appearance overall, too, in the decade, which is kind of crazy. They won in 01, and then they lost to Florida in 2009, two years ago, and they are back this year. So, okay, we're going to sim through the first quarter here. And no score there. UCLA got, jumps out to a 7 nothing lead, 10 nothing lead. Army's driving here, third and five. Let's see what Army can do. Got shotgun with Terrell here. Trips kind of the top of the screen. Drops back, fires. That could be picked. Oh, UCLA. That probably should have been picked off. Terrell has not been great throwing the football. Uh, they actually go for it on fourth down and get stopped as well. Oh, UCLA can take a stranglehold here. It is third and two. This is where UCLA, they get a lead. They get you into third and short, and they can just run the football with all their running backs. This is not where you want to be. They're going to run a little toss here, but Army does a great job of getting out there and shutting that down. Oh, and UCLA is actually going to go for this, kind of out of field goal range. They're like, yeah, we might as well just do it here. Fourth and three. I would probably try something a little bit more downhill. No, they're going to pass it. Sliding. He's going to do a little fade away and Army gets the stop. That is a huge stop for Army. And uh, let's see if they can put a drive together, though. No, they get stopped. Third and goal. Okay, fumble by UCLA. Oh, Army has it on the three-yard line and they score. Wow, that's a huge turn of events for Army. Third and nine, fourth and one. Okay, UCLA is driving first and 10, second and seven, third and three, kind of right around that same area of the field where they got stopped last time. Third and three, 10 7 game in the rain. Their wishbone offense. He's going to drop back, though. Nobody. Oh, he's got. Oh, he just missed him. Their QB's pass for 34 yards. This isn't like when they had Liner and Darnold. This guy's not quite to that level. They're going for it on fourth down again. This is basically the exact same thing that happened the last drive we were watching them. Um, basically, same area of the field. Fourth and three here. Drops back. Bringing a blitz, and Army gets the sack. What a call. That looks like a little bit of a stunt. The guy comes in the inside and Pennington is going down. Third and 15, though. Army is struggling to really get it going offensively. Pryor has not been great. I don't know if it's the rain. I mean, he's, he, maybe they, I mean, obviously they would have liked to have Tyrod here, but they do have Pryor. Checks it down, gets eight yards. UCLA is going to call a timeout. They have plenty of time to go try to put a drive together here. Pryor's got 69 yards passing um gain of 13 gain of 20 gain of 34 down to the five yard line so ucla just unleashed some the football there they're a running team but they were letting it fly there and they got all the way down to the five yard line they're gonna do a little jet sweep the running back goes down they have a lot of time they have a minute they do not have to worry about the clock here. I'm going to sim one. Okay, they got a touchdown there. 17-7. Pryor does have a bit of time here. Incomplete. Third and 10. Fourth and one. 15 yard. Oh, first and 10. Three sec. Oh, trial prior intercepted by Stefan Gilmore. So Pryor has not been good. Okay, I'm going to sim through the third quarter. Your army scores there. We're just going to keep simming. Um, so it's 17-14. Pryor just hit two big bombs. First and okay. Second and 13. Third and seven here from the 11. 17 14 lead for UCLA. Pryor going empty. Trips to the bottom. Well, let's see what Pryor can do. Drops back. He's got pressure. Oh, and he goes down. That's Bobby Wagner coming off the edge on the linebacker blitz. 
10 of 29 passing. They got prior to 30% completion percentage, but it is tied. We're going to be tied most likely going into the fourth quarter here. Eight yard rush, six yard rush, one yard minus four. And we got third and 12 at the start of the fourth here for UCLA. Uh, trips are kind of a double set still in their kind of wishbone offense is obviously going to be a drop back though. And they're bringing a blitz pressure hit as he throws, but he gets a completion. That was a nice completion under pressure there wow okay ucla third and four and they get it to fourth and one and they're actually gonna punt this okay prior it's for 20 so all of a sudden this army offense is coming alive a little bit we got third and five here now probably at a field goal range in the rain college football they're a lot less aggressive with their kicks in this game uh prior drops back gonna check out. oh what a play Bill Hamby with the diving knockout. And I don't think Army's going to be able to go for this. Or sorry, they go for it and they get sacked. I meant go for it as in a field goal. And all of a sudden, 530 left. UCLA is great field position. They hit a big play. Second and seven. First and goal. Second and goal from the four. So UCLA a chance to take a seven point lead with four minutes left. At worst, they should be able to kick a somewhat chip shot field goal. Gonna do a little toss here. Oh, that guy had to stop his feet. There was nothing going. Army comes up. It's a great play in the backfield. Now we got third and goal from the seven. If you're UCLA, you would love to punch this in, but going up three, you've done a really good job with this Army offense. You've got to feel confident. Okay, Pennington drops back, slides. He's going to check that down. Um, he completed it, so the clock's going to keep moving, but Army does a really good job of standing tall there. Going to kick the field goal, and UCLA goes up three. Four-yard rush, four-yard rush, fourth and two. They probably will. They punt it. Oh, UCLA could wrap it up right here. Okay, third and six. Army does have three timeouts, so if UCLA does get a first down, it's not over. But, uh, you know, this is a huge down play of the day right here for Army if they want to win this one. Okay, drops back. Fires it. Oh, that's a huge completion. I did not think UCLA was going to push the ball down the field like that. And this might be close to over after that. Three yard. Oh, it's third and 11 already, though. Okay. So 151 left. Army has a no timeouts. So a touchdown here would end this. Or sorry, a uh, first down would end this. Speed option. What a pitch. And he come. Wow. That is going to be the game. Pedlington gets out in the move, getting hit, flips it out. Army has no timeouts. Four yards, third and 15. Okay, there's a minute left and they're punting. He took a knee, 43 seconds. Okay, so somehow Army has a little more time left than I thought. Second and 10. Oh my God, they just hit for 23. Okay, we're going to watch from here. They have 21 seconds. You better freaking hurry, Army. You got three. You got down three 17 seconds no timeouts i thought it was over after that oh my god snap the ball prior uh, man i don't know this is an old game guys sometimes the clock management so he's basically going last play of the day for no reason i don't know uh so now he needs a a, a hail mary i mean that would have been good if you would have just done that with 17 seconds left you could have spiked it maybe kicked a field goal but that is it ucla is gonna beat army in the 2011 national championship and i believe that is their fourth or fifth of the sim um let's just go through so they won in 2011 won in 07 they won in oh in 2098 and 1989 so that is their fifth championship and they've made like freaking 12 or 13 so they tie um ohio state for the most through the sim i think they each have five and then might have four florida has four uh prior did not play great if he played better army could have won this one maybe if they had tie rod they would have got it done but yeah he, he pedlington or however you pronounce this qb's name definitely outplayed him nathan pedlington pedlington definitely outplayed him um he, he made the plays when it counted he ran the ball well too so ucla their fifth ring so it looks like it's going to be them florida or uh ohio state who ends with the most we have a like 
we have like 10, 11 seasons left in the sim so so we are gonna sim now to end a bowl season here okay so let's see here top 25 UCLA, Army, Nebraska, Florida, Texas, AM, Georgia State. So, Georgia State with Cam, Minnesota. So, let's look. So, Blaine Gabbert, 4,500 yards for Ohio State. RG3, Andrew Luck, EJ Manuel, top four. Uh, Ingram, second in the country in rushing, receiving yards. Uh, that was the top five. Tackles, sacks, Olivier Vernon for Miami was on the list. Stephon Gilmore. Holy crap. Harris for Penn State had 13 interceptions. That's freaking insane. Uh, points per game, Texas, Florida, Texas A&M, Minnesota, UCLA. Defensively, UCLA, USF, Army, Florida, Memphis, Tulsa. We are going to go look at National Signing Day. We haven't looked at any of the recruiting, so I have no idea where any of these guys are going. And then we're going to look at coaches and that's going to wrap up the video, guys. Make sure you stick around. Let's well, we made it this far. Let's see. Let's see this through. OK, so let's go through this. So Jameis Winston ends up at Florida. That is a huge pickup for them. The QBs they have had are absolutely they had like Tim Couch, Favre, Philip Rivers, Tim Tebow. Like I'm missing guys like they've had a crazy group of QBs. Uh, and then the other one was Paxton. He's going to go to Oklahoma. Wow. Big pickup for OU. Running backs. Kenyon Drake ends up at Ohio. Uh, Vautech for Todd Gurley. Doriel Green Beckham ends up at Oklahoma. Amari Cooper goes to Florida. Going to team up with Jameis. That is a great combo. So, so Shepard and Beckham go to OU. Stephon Diggs goes to SC. They got him and Tavon Austin. Um, offensive lineman. Humphreys ends up at UCLA. Decker, Ohio State. St wow, the freaking tackles UCLA's got. And they got Luan and Fluker two years ago. Then they got Humphreys and Stanley this year. They are going to be able to run the ball. Josh Garnett goes to Nebraska. They got some guards at Nebraska, man. I like that fit for them, though. Defensive end, DeForest Buckner goes to Nebraska. Dante Fowler goes to Ohio State. The tackles, Goldman goes to UCLA. Leonard Williams goes to Florida. Eric Armstead goes to Minnesota. They got Aaron Darnold, Eric Armstead, and frick the other d tackle last year i can't remember his name the kind of in dominic beasley easily wow they have got some recruits man shaq thompson going to stanford and then we got leonard floyd he's like way down here for some reason there he is leonard floyd going to georgia tech middles reggie ragland going to ucla ucla man darby going to florida free safety may going to florida and landing collins going to texas i i would say ucla and florida really stood out to me their classes so ucla only one five star but or, but did goldman ragland stanley humphreys were there really big guys then florida had four five stars winston darby may amari cooper and leonard williams that is a freaking class army top five again nebraska and mizzou ucf stanford penn state miami that is where we are sitting guys so yeah ucla florida really putting in more okay we're gonna go look at the coaches here so alvarez staying at michigan state safe for now bobby bowden uh he's at dc at minnesota arkansas state for mac brown pete carroll at rutgers now for head coach jim harbaugh safe at mississippi state woody hayes safe at ohio state lou holtz at tulane don james on the hot seat at rice jimmy johnson hot seat at arizona chip kelly the oc at um ohio state urban meyer safe at florida neeland low at mizzou ed orgeron low at nevada Tom Osborne safe at Nebraska. Joe Paw safe for now at Miami. Gary, Gary Patterson safe at Temple. Nick Saban safe at Kent State. Bo Schembechler safe. He's been there at 16 years at Penn State now. And then Schnellenberger safe at Georgia Tech. He's been there for 14. Kirby safe at Georgia. Spur Spurrier. Uh, Dabo got fired at Bama. And he's now the OC at Georgia. Barry Switzer safe. Kyle Whittingham, I think he got fired where he was at as well. So that is going to be it, guys. That is going to wrap up our fifth episode of this series. We only have two more. Now, if you're watching this in the future, episode six is up next, and you can actually check that out right here or here. So you can just keep heading on. Just keep watching. Okay, that is it. Peace.